From coast to coast, live via satellite, it's time to praise the Lord. covers the major Christian events in America and across the world, reaching over 500 million souls with the good news of new life in Jesus Christ. Now from Southern California, we invite you to be a part of the world's largest prayer gathering. Before all nature rises up to shine, shine. Videotape, Nikki Cruz, Dr. Lester Summerall, and ministering in music, David Sam. And ready to take your call, some of the most beautiful prayer partners in the world. Now your hosts, president and founders of the Trinity Broadcasting Network, Paul and Jay. Welcome, 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 everybody. Oh, it's good to be with you tonight. Isn't it wonderful to have a family of brothers and sisters? You know, I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. I feel closer to many of you who know and love Jesus tonight than I do to some of my own blood relatives because some of them don't know Jesus as their Savior. Isn't it great to be a family and to just know one another and love one another in the Lord, even though we may not have ever met we still feel that kindred spirit, don't we, of, of love. Absolutely. How's my little sweetheart tonight? Well, I love you. I love you, too. And what a joy. You know, tonight I was a little late getting here. Isn't that unusual for me to be late? <laughs> the audience is laughing. They know I came flying. But uh, we've got several special things we want to do tonight. Of course, Brother Lester Summerall is here, and he's one of our favorite people in the world. He taught me to eat spinach when I was six years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I have rosy cheeks. How come you still don't eat it? <laughs> <laughs> How come I don't have rosy ones at night? Huh? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, but that's true. He did. He's been a friend of our family for many, many years. But uh, one of the greatest joys that we're going to have tonight is we're going to share a couple of letters. And I've got a surprise for you from some sweet little people. And we met some beautiful people. Just we ran in tonight and... Had my arms full of little gifts they'd given me from the audience, and that's so sweet and precious. Talk to Sarah Johnson just as I got here tonight, our little counselor. Did you hear her miracle? No. People, remember the other night we just kind of mentioned that little Sarah Johnson, that Satan had robbed her of her car, that she drove down here and back, down here and back to counsel with, and a brother called and is going to buy her a new car. A new car? <laughs> Isn't that? A new, oh, I'm just, a new one. I'm Hello. Oh, I love it, love it. Well, I had heard that someone was going to give her a used car. This is even better. This is brand new news. Oh, brand. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Well, I can't think of anyone who will put it to better use because she's been riding and transferring two, three times on the bus to get down here from Los Angeles. By the way, camera two, pan the whole area there, and I'm going to just appeal again from my heart for laborers to come into the harvest field. Thank God I see maybe 15 or 20 beautiful prayer partners there and they are already talking with people on the phone, praying with people, leading some I'm sure to Christ. But if you'll keep panning camera two, take a look. There are probably 20 or 25 empty seats there. And my heart is heavy as I see those empty seats because I know that if there were prayer partners there, there would be somebody on some of those phones. There would be people talking, and finding Christ, and being prayed with and counseled with. And so, Christians, we need you. In every one of our stations and prayer partner centers, we, need, we never have enough prayer partners to counsel on the phones and pray with people and lead them to Christ. So, please... Come on down, call first, 
right call your local station we're talking about of course southern california channel 40 channel 21 phoenix uh, channel 14 oklahoma city channel 43 richmond and so on our local stations that's the only places now we have local prayer partner counseling centers uh, but we need you jesus needs you and most of all suffering hurting humanity needs you and we have a job for you to do. We really do. So call us. Will you do that? Why don't we have David Sapp sing a beautiful song and then Jan had a good idea. We're going to come on over and howdy with a few of you folks in the audience tonight and uh, let you help us get this program underway tonight. I've got a little report that I'm going to give you some of the exciting things that I've been doing today. And uh, so just get set. This is going to be a great, great night. I'm going to go to the streets of New York city. Hello, New York. We love you. And we're going to go to the Lower East Side of Manhattan. And I'll tell you, a former gang member, Nikki Cruz, who was involved in all kinds of terrible things. You know, honey, as, J as Matthew, our son, and I were sitting and we were previewing this tonight. And I heard that young man preaching the gospel. I said, son, if I had no other proof of the gospel than that one young man, that would be enough. It really it's would. Incredible. So get set. Many people I know are going to find Christ and get set free and delivered. If you've got a problem with the devil, <laughs> Lester Summerall is here tonight. And the devil's scared <laughs> to death of him. And we'll get him cast out or run off or whatever needs to be done tonight. I guarantee it in the name of Jesus. David Sapp sings a beautiful song. What a joy to have him back from Modesto, right? California, and he's going to sing a song to get us underway tonight entitled, It's All Right. Well, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right, as long as I've got my Lord beside me, it's all right, long as I've got his hand, oh, as long as he's watching over my soul, as long as everything's in his control, it's all right. Now Moses said, well, it's all right. When the chariots of Pharaoh followed him in their flight, well, the sea divided in two. Moses and the children walked right through with the wall of water on their left and on their right. On their right. Now it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. As long as I've got my Lord right beside me. It's all right. Long as I've got his hand. Oh, long as he's watching over my Everything's in his control. It's all right. It's all right. Little David said, Well, it's all right. But when Goliath mocked him and he challenged him to a fight, little David said a prayer and then he slung a little stone and done him in. And the people said, Amen, and praised the Almighty's might. Well, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. As long as I've got my Lord beside me. It's all right. Long as I've got His hand. Oh, long as He's watching over my soul. And long as everything's in His control. It's all right, listen to me now. Cause Daniel said, well, it's all right. But when they threw him into the lion's den that awful night, while the hungry lions walked about, Daniel prayed, Lord, you gotta help me out. And then the Lord came and he shut their mouth and he shut it tight. Ooh, well, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. As long as I've got my Lord beside me. It's all right. Long as I've got his hand to hold. And long as he's watching over my soul. And long as everything's in his control. It's all right. It's all right.
Thank you, David. We thought we'd just come on over here and we'd all pose for a family portrait. Would you all sit up straight and smile real pretty? This is part of the family of God. I think they're beautiful, don't you? Oh, there's our brothers and our sisters and our papas. <gasps> a little bald-headed papa. Can I? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> Jan's favorite occupation, kissing little bald-headed papas. <laughs> he said it was worth coming here after all. A little question I always love to ask when I get in a bunch of partners like this is, first of all, and I, I haven't really set this up, so I don't know. Are any of you here tonight and you have found Christ as your Savior through Christian television? Let me see your Hold them up real high. Real high. Let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. My goodness. How many have uh, had a prayer answered as we agreed together on Christian television? Maybe for a physical healing or whatever. Wonderful. God bless you all. Anybody from out of town? Any from out, Where are you all from? Houston, Texas. Turlock, California. What part of Ohio? Channel 43 land? Or do you see it in? Oh, you're trying to get it on the satellite up there. New York City, but you're a transplant out here. Yes. Oklahoma City, Channel 14. Phoenix, Arizona, Channel 21. Miles City, Montana. Welcome, everybody. It's good to have you all here tonight. Give yourselves a hand. And then one of our favorite occupations for the rest of your brothers and sisters, would you throw a, I was going to say a Southern California, but this is kind of a multi-love wave uh, to all of our partners in New York and Oklahoma and just 40 different states. We're on cable systems in 350 places across the nation, so it's just great to have you all. And now the whole family is together. You're going to read a little word and maybe well, a letter or two before? I just, I just have something real special for you. I heard you tonight on Behind the Scenes, and you were talking about the need in his hand extended. And, you know, um, one of our cameramen one night, as I came in to do the Behind the Scenes, came up to me. It was Eric, and he said, you know, Jan, he said, I had a real heartbreak today. He said, I was over and happened to see the line waiting for his hand extended to get in and get food and clothing. And he said, there must have been 30 or more lined up here at the studio at Channel 40. And he said, I just thought, you know, what a heartbreak if we ever had to turn them away. And I know that one of our um, employees here was over there one day and saw the need. And he went to the grocery store and bought 50 pounds of rice and beans himself out of his own salary mm. and took it over there for the, his hand extended. And we are feeding the hungry and clothing the naked and the hurting and giving blankets and whatever comes in. And so many times we don't get the result of what happens when we do give things out. And this week, my little secretary had something so sweet laid out for me, and you haven't even seen this. But there were some little children that came in, and in their time of super need, Trinity Broadcasting had given them some clothing and some food. And they came all the way back, and this is a little letter to you and to me and there was a little gift with it which I'll show it says dear Paul Jan God bless you Jesus loves you and thank you for the food and the clothes and it was a little boy named Sodari and I understand from the people that brought him in that they were um, little Indo-Chinese people um, I forget that Joni would remember where they were from. And then here's one that says, Dear Paul Jan, P-A-U, <laughs> God, thank God and you, and thank you for the blessed clothes, little Sim. And then they made this, which is a little heart, and they put some sequins on it. I mean, a little cross with sequins. On the inside it said, Jesus loves you. And then they have quoted scripture. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness 
and will hold and keep you. I love Jesus. God loves you. And this is the little things that they made. And this is what they had made with their hands. And I want you to see this. They had taken little pieces of terry cloth. And honey, that is hand stitched. And it says Sing. And this is from Sing. This is her name. Jesus loves you. And she's hand stitched it, hand made it. And this was her little gift back to us <laughs> for the clothes and the food when they were in need. And they've given us several. All, er, each little child made their own. This is Naifi, little foreign name, Jesus Loves You. And they made their own. And they're little hand-stitched. They're hand-stitched. And, you know, I think people need to see the results of giving to His Hand Extended and the people getting from all the stations. Here in Southern California, we have His Hand Extended at the Channel 40 studio, and we just ask that we all have more than we need. Everybody in Southern California really has more than they need of those that have, and you can bring in something every night. We ask for stables, rice, beans, clothes, good used clothes, good clothes. People can use them. Blankets, coats, canned goods, those kind of things. And every day they go out. And I just thank God for that ministry. I heard um, one of our pastors that was on the other night, the one from Canton, Ohio, said that he had built churches and schools and all these things. Then he decided to do this giveaway program of helping the poor. And God spoke to him one time and said, Dave Lombardi, that's the most important thing you're doing Amen. for me. Amen. The most important. And, you know, I was t saying to Joni when I read these, I said, Joni, if this help for these children had come from the state, they wouldn't have realized that it was Jesus that had given it to them. Jesus, people. Jesus loved them. Jesus did it. People that love Jesus. So now they talk about Jesus as a thank you. Be careful. You'll get me started on this. And, and I'll tell you, the church, people hear me, the church of Jesus Christ has given up one of the major ministries that God called us to do. And we've turned it over to the state. Now we don't like it too much, but we've done it. But there's time to take that back. And you remember, the Bible is very clear. It says that the church, the body of Christ, is to take care of the widows and the orphans and to minister to those who are in need. And if we had done that, as we are supposed to be doing down through the years, I don't believe our country would be in the mess that it's in today with the welfare problems and with all of the other unemployment problems. If the church had shouldered its God-assigned and ordained responsibility, I think our country would be a lot better off today than it is. I really believe that in my heart. Well, there's opportunity for us to do something about this. And, of course, we encourage people in all of the cities where we have television stations to bring, as Jan said, all of these things down to the station. If you can't get to the station, if you'll tuck in an extra 5 or $10 or whatever the Lord leads you to do, we promise to use it to buy food and even, in some cases, clothing and blankets, and we'll give it away, not in the name of the state, but in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you'll get these kinds of little reports back. People you know, knowing and finding the Lord Jesus as their saviors. Yeah, let's do, join hands, let's agree in the name of Jesus right now and ask God to just take this program and use it for his glory tonight. Father, we just thank you that we know Jesus. We praise you that his name can be on our lips throughout this program without apology and we can tell men and women about the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we're so thankful that we have salvation and that He has written our names even in the very Lamb's book of eternal life. Lord, we just will never cease to praise you. A billion, million years from now, we'll thank you and praise you for the day that we knew that we were saved and born again by the Spirit of God. Now, Lord, our hearts are reaching out to millions across America tonight, many who do not know this Jesus that we love. Help us reach them tonight. Anoint David as he sings the songs of Zion. Anoint 
Brother Summerall, as he opens his heart and the word to us tonight, God, we agree that souls shall be saved tonight, bodies shall be healed, and that the will of God shall be accomplished tonight. In the name of Jesus, we ask it all, and all the church here said, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen, amen. Shall we sing another song? Yes, we've just been praying about and to the Lord Jesus. Now let's sing about him with David Sam. And then Jan's going to share a letter or two, and then we're going to the streets of New York City. David Sapp, God bless you. Give him another Southern California welcome. I see Jesus. Thank you, David. David Sapp. We're going to have beautiful anointed music tonight. Did you know what I did today before Jan reads a letter? 
I spent $250,000 of your money today. Hello. Hello, church. Hello, church. <laughs> Do you know what for, though? He already knows. Somebody already knew. The down payment on your brand new Tacoma Seattle Woo! Channel 20. The transmitter's ordered. It's under construction. I just am believing that before this year of 1983 is over, we're going to throw the seventh big switch. And that great Puget Sound area up there in northwest Washington will have 24-hour-a-day, 100% Christian television. Pray for us. And now those of you that have made pledges for helping to get Channel 20 on the air up there, we need them. We're under construction, full bore. I mean, there have been lots of preparations and, of course, many expenses, surveying fees, buying property, all kinds of things. But now, I mean, we're really... Mm, in the thick of it. Right. And there will be towers going up and red lights flashing and little <laughs> TV cameras. And I mean Woo! another whole... You know what thrills me so? New York, yeah. Miami, Los Angeles, Seattle. And we've got the four corners of this country staked out and boy, the devil's on notice. Mm -mm. Everything in between belongs to God and to us, and we're taken over Amen. in the name of Jesus. Glory. And mm. Brother Lester's right in the center yes. <laughs> with Indianapolis. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> I have one of the most unusual, beautiful letters that we've seen. Unusual. Now, all of them are beautiful. This one is very unusual. It's from Tempe, Arizona. It's from Donna Johnson. And I want to read a beautiful letter. Dear Paul and Jan, praise the Lord for Christian Television in Channel 21. About a month ago on a Sunday night, my older sister was watching Channel 21 in her bedroom. My mother and other sister and I were in the living room talking when a knock came at the door. My mother looked out the peephole, and there was a young man standing there. It was about 11 p.m., so we were hesitant to open the door, but my mother felt in her spirit that all was well, and she should open the door to him. So she opened and asked him what he needed. He said he needed prayer. He asked her if she was a child of God, and she said yes, and asked him if he was. During the conversation, it became clear that he didn't have a personal relationship with Jesus. I took the lead and led him through the plan of salvation and prayed and asked the Lord to come into his life and be his Lord. Then I felt impressed to explain the baptism of the Holy Spirit to him. He wanted to receive this gift. As he prayed to receive, he began to weep. And the most beautiful heavenly language mm -hmm. began to flow from his right, lips. Right. He prayed and cried together with us for a long time. Then, listen to this, then we asked him why he had come to our door. He said that he had been to a park and he was very upset about the pressure that he was facing and felt his life wasn't even worth li li living. He decided to come and see his sister who lived upstairs from my mother. She wasn't home, so he sat on the steps, very despondent, contemplating suicide. When all of a sudden, he heard my sister's TV on channel 21. Through the wall of the... Through the wall oh. of the home sitting on the step. He said he knew we were Christians. And we would help him because we had been listening to Christian TV. So praise God for Channel 21 and for your vision. Our prayers and support mm. are with you always. <laughs> Donna Johnson from Tempe, Arizona. Is that, that has got to be one of the most different and unique testimonies I've ever heard. So not only are people blessed in their own homes by watching it, you never know who's passing by your window mm. or by your door or by your front yard. But let's all lift our windows a little bit now as we... Yes. Isn't that great? Do you want to hear the Rolling Indian one more letter? Or sh what should we do? You got one more little letter one there? More? Share one more letter and then I'm, I'm going to take them to the streets of New York oh, City. This, this is very good and you'll love it. Paul is a frustrated general. 
He, <laughs> he and Hal Lindsey would love to take over the American and Israeli armies as five star generals. They both would. They're both frustrated generals. <laughs> but this is this is a letter from a real. A real, a real general? Uh, well, I don't know if he's a general. Well, no, I'm we'll a general him. in the Lord's Army. Oh, that's right. See, yes. That's right. Yes, yes sir. Th thank you very much. <laughs> this, oh, it's from, what is that, Staff Sergeant? Oh, Staff Sergeant. That's not quite a general. Well, <laughs> but it is to his wife. Oh, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> but he is, he's, he's uh, stationed right here at the... Uh, the Marine Corps base, El Toro, just right over here, mm -hmm. and here in Santa Ana. And he says, Dear Paul and Jan, thank you so much for the wonderful programs you have on TBN. As a new Christian, having re recently accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, your interpretation of the Scripture is very important to my understanding of the Word. Every night as I watch TBN, I get a better understanding of the Bible and God's love for us. Being a career military man, I find your interpretation of current current events in the Middle East and Central America and in Asia most fascinating. Military planners are always anticipating what will happen and where next. And I know the answer. <laughs> I love it. He ought to be on the <laughs> Joint Chiefs of Staff. Really? Christians have always known the answer. It is written in the most popular book of current events, the Bible. Many people think that it's not right to be a Marine and a Christian at the same time. <laughs> but what better place to witness for the Lord than in the midst of sinners? Young, many young adults away from stable, protective families for the first time fall prey to many traps of Satan has set for them with drugs, alcohol, alcohol, lying, lust of the flesh, but thanks to TBN and a few Christian Marines for showing us the light. Uh, it's so great. It says, many times, uh, the last 20 years, the Lord has come and said, follow me, but not until lately did I really do that. And he tells us some things that happened, but says, thank you, TBN, for being there. When I needed your guidance, I go to church now, but I watch your network nightly. It is good to see something beneficial coming from a TV set. Usually I don't turn the TV off until TBN goes off. Well, it never goes off. So yeah, you're watching a lot. I'm afraid I might miss something. I know how you feel. Thank you and praise the Lord. Born again, Staff Sergeant Charles Owen from the Marine Base right here at El Toro. Isn't that Thank you, Sergeant. Appreciate that. Good testimony. Why don't we go do a little spiritual battle right now? You can relive it with us. Many of you remember uh, just a few days ago, we threw that big switch in New York City, Channel 54. Woo. I mean, there is a new light in New York. There's no question about that. But just before we did that, we, of course, had Hallelujah New York, Arthur Blessed, Rosie Greer, Nikki Cruz, and all of us walked down 42nd Street, Times Square, Broadway, parked the big holy beamer underneath the Coca-Cola sign. Did any of you get to see that? How many got to see some of that good goings-ons, as we say back in Missouri? Well, right after the Hallelujah New York, we all jumped in cars and cabs, and some walked, I guess, and we went down to the lower uh, east side of Manhattan. And there was a big city park there. And, of course, that's just across the river from Brooklyn. And, of course, that was Nicky Cruz's turf, as they called it back then. The Mau Mau gangs and the rival gangs. Oh, my. In fact, Nicky tells a little bit about that in the tremendous message that he preached there that day. So let's go and relive those exciting moments as Jan and I shared, Rosie Greer and Nicky Cruz, and get young people to hear what Nicky has to say right now. Happy, beautiful Love, welcome to Jana Forkrantz. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, everybody. You've all made us feel very much at home here, and we love you all very, very much. We're here in New York for one purpose, to simply tell you that God loves you, Jesus loves you, and we love you too. Glory. And we're going to say to New York 24 hours a day, that Jesus loves you and is the answer to every human need. Drugs are not the answer. Violence and sex and all of the things that so many have tried in this city are not the answer. Jesus is the answer. And that's what we're here to say today. Christians, we've been asleep. We've been letting the devil run roughshod over our city and our people. We're here to say to the devil, this city is not yours any longer.
wonder, it belongs to Jesus. It belongs to God. And we're going to walk on the streets of New York and say to New York, God loves you, Jesus loves you, we love you, and we're taking territory away from the devil in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we love you. My goodness, what a joy to be here. And to be with Pastor Sybil and Proof again. They were with us when we went down and passed out how many thousand dolls? How many thousand? I don't know, maybe 10,000 dolls in one of the parks here in Brooklyn with the children, to the children. And we had the message of Jesus Christ excuse me, around the neck of every one of those little dolls. Gave them out telling this city, Jesus loves you and we love you. We want every one of you to know Jesus. You know, I look at Nikki Cruz now and see this handsome, gorgeous, fantastic, full of love and Jesus person. I can't ever imagine him hurting a flea. I just can't imagine. But to know that people, young people in this city, don't know that there's a line at the end of this darkness. They don't know there's any hope. They don't know there's any peace. And we're the ones that can tell them. Amen. Through churches like Pastor Zimbalist, through books like Nikki, through Channel 54, but most of all, through you individually Amen. telling them that Jesus loves them. Amen. That's how Nikki heard it when David Wilkerson had the nerve to walk up to him and say, young man, Jesus loves you. And that's what changed his life and changed his life. that needs no introduction. You know him, you love him. He used to play on the New York Jets and then on the L.A. Rams. Giants, Giants, I'm sorry. Don't stone me, please. <laughs> Jesus got a hold of this great, big, good-looking guy and turned his life around, and he's a powerhouse for Jesus now. Give Rosie Greer a great big New York welcome today. About 15 years ago, uh, the 6th of uh, June, I met a man who wanted to be president of the United States of America, and I began to I began to campaign around with a man named Bobby, uh, Senator Robert F. Kennedy, who was senator of this state. He wanted to be president. He wanted to lead the nation. He he felt that he could he could help this nation change to be the kind of nation that it ought to be. He said, I want to lead. He went around all over the country telling people that he could change his nation. He went everywhere. And we went all over the place. And just about time, we thought he had arrived at the point where everyone was saying, yes, this is the man that we choose to lead us. A person came out of the crowd and shot him dead with a gun. And from that period on, I began to feel that all hope was gone. My life was crushed. And then one day, thanks to television, somebody told me that a man was teaching the Bible on television. And I turned the television on. And at that particular time, I was divorced from my, my, my wife. My life was a wreck. And someone said, if you, if you look at the Word of God and you read the Word of God, if you read the, the written Word, you will find the living Word. God. And I began to learn the written Word and I found a living God and He changed my life. He restored my family together. Amen. I got remarried to my ex-wife of all people. <laughs> But that's, but that's what the love of God will do in your life. If you want someone that nobody can kill, and when you slide into him, you become bold enough to tell people that I have a man inside that you ought to see. And that man is Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful for the thing that God has done in my life. For what he has done in my life, 
is nothing to what he's going to do through me. For all the people that are here that name Jesus. I only talk about one name today. That's Jesus Christ. If you receive Jesus Christ in your life, your life won't be the same either. my parents. I was born in the arms of witchcraft. Spooky, huh? huh? I was born in a home that they literally worshipped Satan. They was very involved in a spiritualism and a cult. And there was my father that for years and generation and generation my father had been born in a curse from my grand grandparents and you can go with tap 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 grandparents and there was a curse which is mean there was no hope for the Cruz family the devil had got a hold of that family said my father and here my mother just married my father and she was 15 years old she fell in love with my dad and my daddy was about 26 years old and here, my father, being that my mother was a strong, dedicated Catholic girl, here my father was the opposite. My father brainwashed my mother. My mother began to get into. Then from there, they used to come people from all over. My father used to do all kinds of miracles, not through the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. And from that point on, here, that was the place that God placed me. In the arms of witchcraft. It brought me right there in a curse in a family that nobody ever thought that ever they would have a Bible on their hands, that ever these people are going to either mention the name of Jesus Christ. And here, through all of this, I was rejected when I was eight years old. My mother told me, Get out of my life, I don't love you. Some of you, you don't have no excuse. You know you have been rejected and you know the pain of rejection. Some of you, you know your heart that is hard and it's very painful to be rejected. Some of you in this moment feel like I was. My mother told me, I don't love you. And that is a hard for a child to understand. Here, they bring, they bring you in this world. They play with you like a little doll. Then, after that, they get tired. They don't want you no more. Then here it come my family, all my sister, one sister I have, and 17 of my brother, under the curse of Satan. And here there's no way that they're going to be a place that we're going to change. And something happened when I came to this city, and I got involved in this city. And we have 205 guys and 75 girls, and we declare war against anything. There was murder, there was killing, there was people dro dropped from the building. People were drowned in the Hudson River with a block in their necks. People were set up and then pulled a butter right on their brains. And here we were teenagers, man. Here we were kids. Here we were infected by the pressure of the city. If you think that this is very nice, I know this neighborhood. Just to look at the building and to look at the people and to look at these beautiful children. You might say, that's no hope for New York. I say, you're wrong, man. Yeah. You are totally yeah. 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 There's no way you can believe in that. I Praise thank God, God that through all of these things, God protect me to be killed. I have been set up two times and in some way, I was a sinner. Always, God has something there for Nikki Cruz. Did you discover one thing? That God always had loved you? He despised and hate you sin. But let me tell you, I got good news for you. There was a man who came, and regardless if I beat him up, he was a preacher. And I heard him, and I bust his face, and I cursed God, and I used all those four letter words against God, against that man, mother, or whatever. This man told me, Nikki, Jesus love you. He can change your life. And I just walk out and I say, no way I can change. The reason I'm talking loud because I want every person in the window to hear this. No way I can change. But let me tell you something. That man told me you can kill me and you can 
destroy me because I was capable to destroy him and to cut him into pieces and to blow him away with my 32 revolver. That man said, you can kill me, you can cut me in thousand pieces. But every piece is going to cry out that Jesus loves you. And two weeks later, I walk in and Jesus walking around with my 32 revolver, thinking that the whole world belongs to me. I heard the good news that Jesus Christ died for me. He took all my punishment, all my sins, all my guilt, all my frustration, all my confusion, all my fear, all my uncertainty, all of these things, and He crushed it and killed it right there in His body for me to be free. And I'll tell you one thing what happened to me. 30 minutes later, I have experienced the greater resurrection. Hallelujah. He just crawled inside of me. <laughs> he kissed my pain away. Yes. And he went into the peace of my God and quenched the hate. And right there he brought out the greatest love of all love. And I began to realize that he loved me, that I'm capable to love him. And that day I asked him literally, Jesus Christ, I don't know who you are. This man say that you love me. I don't love you. But that man say, yes, Nikki, I love you. I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. I'm a free man today. I'm a father man today. I got children today. And I got good news for you, family. I got good news for you, family. My mother, that she was a witch, she came to Jesus Christ. My father that was the great Buddha, doctor, witch, he burned all the witchcraft books and he confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Lord of the life. And therefore, my brother, listen to me, to all my brother, they came to Jesus Christ, free them in the ministry today. How will I say, I got hope. I know where the hope comes from, and the hope for New York City, and the hope for you, and this hope, you know who is? Jesus Christ, that right now is in this place, right now. Right now is here. We come against you, Satan. We come against you where we are in your street of this neighborhood. After Nikki con concluded his ministry there, of course, there was a great altar call, and. Rosie and Jan and all of us moved around and talked with people and prayed with people. But you know, honey, I just feel that right now there are people across America, this word that Nikki Cruz, this former Mau Mau gang member that had killed people, that had shot up with drugs, that has done everything wicked, I suppose, that a human being could do. The same Jesus that saved Nikki Cruz will save people right now across America. Right now. That Jesus is here now. He's there in your room with you. And as Nikki is pleading with people there on the streets of New York City, I'm pleading with you across America to just open your heart to the Lord Jesus. Pray this little prayer. Let's pray it together. And if you'll pray this prayer out loud and mean it, Jesus will save you there in your home right now, just as he saved people on the streets of New York that day by the scores. Let's pray it together. Say this prayer. Dear God, I'm lost. I need a Savior. Please save me now. Wash my sins away by your precious blood. Come into my heart right now. Be my Lord and Savior now and forever. I'm yours. Amen. Oh, praise God. And it's, look at that young lady on the left there. Look at her. Conviction of the Holy Spirit all over her. Others coming forward. Many, many receive Christ there on the streets of New York. But I believe many are receiving Christ right now. Right now. Let him come in. Let him break the chains of sin. Let him deliver you. Let him set you free from drugs and all of the bondage that the evil one can put upon you. Let him do it now. And then move to your phone and dial the number on your screen and say, Paul and Jan, Nikki Cruz, Rosie Greer, body of Christ, I'm saved. I've received Christ. We'll send you a Bible and a new birth certificate. <laughs> oh, I tell you, we had a time on the streets of New York. But it's going on right now in the same Jesus that saved 
just dozens on the streets that day, is saving many of you in your homes right now. If you'll let him, if you'll let him, please let him come into your heart. Do it now. I just feel we ought to pray one more time. And body of Christ, if you'll do some spiritual battle with Jan and me right now, we can be responsible for breaking the strongholds of Satan from hundreds, thousands, even millions of hearts tonight. Many of you have prayed that little prayer. But there's that, oh, I know the struggle begins right then, that hesitation. Shall I call? Shall I confess? Shall I tell someone? Yes, the Bible says you must. If you're going to belong to Christ, there's no such thing as a secret deal. Jesus died for you openly, publicly, and he asks and he demands that you confess him unashamedly and openly. We're going to help you do that right now by agreeing in prayer that the Holy Spirit will just draw you right on in to the fold. Father, in Jesus' name, we agree right now that as your word has been proclaimed and preached, God, that it'll find good soil and that men and women, boys and girls, will say that eternal yes to you right now. God, help us win them and to snatch them as brands from the burning from Satan's evil hold. We agree on this in Jesus' name. Satan, I bind your evil power and command you to loose your hold from off of these that the Spirit of the Lord is calling. We agree on this and we praise you for it, Lord, and give you glory for those who are coming and confessing you as Lord and Savior right now. And all the church said, Amen. 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 We're waiting. We're waiting. All you need to do is pick up a phone. If you can't afford the call, dial collect. We'll take the charges at this end of the line. We want to send you a new birth certificate, a Bible, some other things that will be a great help to you as you start your new walk in freedom with the Lord Jesus Christ. As I said a little while ago, if I had no other proof of the power of the gospel than that one young man, Nicky Cruz, a murderer, a dope pusher, into every kind of occultic demon activity. I mean, man, he had gone as low as you can go. What changed him? Hey, doubter, what changed Nicky Cruz? Do people just suddenly reform? and decide they're going to be good now and not kill anymore? And uh, Show me one. Show me one. What changed Nikki Cruz? You may not believe our message tonight. You may not believe the Bible, but you'll never answer that question. What changed Nikki Cruz? And that'll haunt you. That question will haunt you until you admit the power of God which brings salvation change this young man and if you have no other proof than that one changed life but we've got millions by the way but if you only had that one it would be enough to prove that the power of the gospel is real and it works if you let it but your will is very important open your heart to him right now dial a number oh Honey, we've got to get some more phone counselors on. Maybe we can get some of our volunteers out of the audience or something. We've got to get some more phone lines open. If you get a busy signal, dial again. As David Sapp sings a very appropriate song for many of you tonight. It made the news headlines in heaven the day I got saved. Written 
Not long ago a beggar, but now I'm a child of the king. This old world just shrugged its shoulders. It didn't mean a thing. But listen, oh, but it was God's approval that my spirit really craved. And it made news all over heaven when I got saved. For the angels were rejoicing and the hallelujahs rang. Cause Jesus reached out and touched me. I was changed. Everyone in glory's realm knew my name was written down, and it made news in heaven when I got saved. I believe the angels were rejoicing and hallelujah. When Jesus reached way down and touched me, I was changed. And everyone in glory's realm, they knew my name was written down, cause it made news all over heaven when I got saved. Yes, it David, I think some more news is being made right now. As a matter of fact, I'm sure of it. <laughs> Here's Herman from Brownwood, Texas, 41 years old, Ed. He called in, was watching at work, said he knelt down right there at work and mm. prayed and rededicated his Praise life God. to Jesus. Lucille from Ontario, Arthur from Long, uh, Los Angeles, 42 years old. Here's Sabrina from Pasadena, Sylvia from Los Angeles, Betty from Santa Ana, Jeff from Tustin, uh, Katharina from Miami, Fern from Altadena, Jarrett nice from Ontario, James from Panorama, seven years old, Leslie from Denver, Colorado, prayed with Paul tonight, Levi from Aberdeen, Washington, 20 Jesus years Lord. old. Oh, they, they've Visit got to be visiting. Here's Helen and Dacus from Agia, Athens, Greece. I can't say that. Athens, Greece. Visiting here. My Just received my. Jesus, a couple. Praise Hope God. from Garden Grove and William from North Hollywood. My goodness. Let's Thank welcome you. a whole new group into the family. Thank you. And one quick word that I must say for our friends here in the Southern California region, Nikki Cruz, that you just heard bring that anointed word there from the Lower East Side Park in Manhattan, New York, is going to be here in the Orange County, Southern California area in Anaheim, Melody Land Christian Center next week, July 6th, 7th, and 8th. It's going to be a great bilingual it's, it's going to be a Hispanic emphasis, but it'll be bilingual, so both Spanish and English will be understood and spoken, and he invites you to bring the unsaved. There's a new touch of the Holy Spirit on Nicky Cruz's life and a whole new direction for his ministry. God's giving him just beautiful souls everywhere. So bring the lost to this great service next week, July 6th, 7th, and 8th. That'll be the nights we're at uh, the Full Gospel Businessmen's Convention in Detroit, won't it? Uh, there'll be great uh, singing. The Johnny Gomez Trio will be there. Manuel Bonilla will be there. Art Ortiz. And this is sponsored by the Melody Land Hispanic Church. And it is all in Spanish. It's is it Spanish? Well, Nikki told oh, me personally oh, it's, it's 
Spanish emphasis, oh, but it will be bilingual. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. right. I was going to go and just speak tongues. Doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, anyway, never mind. <laughs> Some more people really? getting saved. Here's Elizabeth from Beverly Hills, 22 years old. Just gave her life to Jesus. Claudette from Los Angeles, 21. And April from Grand Junction. Just prayed Praise while God. watching Nikki Cruz. Please, years old. please keep calling. We're putting extra volunteers on duty right now to take the calls. Many are getting busy signals. I see every line is jammed with people trying to get through to find Christ. Don't be discouraged. Keep calling. Keep dialing. Right now we want you to meet a beautiful brother that I know you know and love as Jan and I do. In case you haven't met him, let me give him a proper introduction. Dr. Lester Summerall is pastor of Christian Center Church in South Bend, Indiana. He is a powerful and dynamic preacher and teacher of the Word of God. He ministers with authority, as you will see. He is greatly used in his ministry of praying for those needing deliverance from fears, mental disorders, demon power, all kinds of problems in their lives. The author of over 50 books, Dr. Summerall is also the editor of World Harvest Magazine, president and founder of radio station WHME, builder of the World Harvest Bible College, erected for the purpose of blessing and inspiring young men and women and preparing them for the ministry. Dr. Summerall has two Christian television stations, Channel 46 in South Bend and Channel 40 in Indianapolis. Indiana, both on the air, giving the devil a fit 24 hours a day. Let's welcome him tonight, Dr. Lester Summerall. Praise the Lord. That's my brother. You know how to put one of these things on, yes, I think, sir. don't you? Yes, sir. No problem. <laughs> Good to have you, Brother Summerall. We we'll always look forward to your coming and sharing with us. Got a couple of questions I want to ask. I know there are many things on your heart, and I don't want folks to think that the only subject you know anything about is the devil, <laughs> but it seems like we kind of get into that when you, when you come. Is that right? Um, Does that mean the other people don't know much about it? <laughs> some I of them do so. not. I some of them so. kind of poor soldiers don't know who to find. I know it. I know it. Maybe we can straighten a little that out today. <laughs> Hallelujah. But Amen. we have we have invaded New York City, as you yeah. know. Yeah. Hey, let's take a bite of the Big Apple. <laughs> yes, sir. And I, I want to ask you some questions. In fact, uh, okay. maybe we can get into a little bit of what we were talking about earlier today and maybe uh, get Brother Summerall to help us a little bit. First of all, I have never, and I've been around the world, I've been in heathen countries, you know, mm. where, you know, we don't even have... Christian light like we have it here in America, but for some reason, when I have been lately entering New York City, there is a heaviness, oh, an yes, oppression, uh -huh. a darkness, yeah. a, a physical, yeah. almost like a physical change comes in my own yeah. body. What's yeah. happening? What's going on? No, it's not happening. It's been that way all the time. Um, I wish to study, you know, my, my, my teachings on demon power. The devil uh, t wants to possess three areas. He wants to possess nations. He does possess India, uh, 300 million demon gods, Tibet, Indonesia, others. He wants to possess nations. He wants to possess cities. Over a city, he has a, a prince, as we're told in Ephesians chapter 6, that he has a prince, and that prince rules. Now, in different cities, there's a different type of a prince that rules. Uh, for example, Las Vegas has a, a lustful a prince of gain, that everyone that mm -hmm. arrives there wants to I illegally gain something that doesn't really belong to him mm -hmm. by gambling. Uh, in New York City, it's a different situation. If a man has a hundred million dollars, he's decided that by tomorrow morning he wants a hundred and two million. And that thing just mm -hmm. ravishes his insides until he can't rest, he can't really enjoy life. That lust for money mm -hmm. is in there. But if you went to Paris, France, it's a different spirit. It's a lustful mm -hmm. spirit uh, where people lose their virtue in Paris. So in every city, there's a different type of spirit that rules over that city. You remember the black brother that we love so well that died? Yes. Jesse Winley. Winley. Yeah. Bishop Winley. Yeah. He came to my church in South Bend, and he got up and he says, <sighs> yeah. mm -hmm. He says, I'm so glad to be out of New York. He says, I got on the plane, and 10 minutes out, 
I, I felt the relief of the pressure of New York. Mm -hmm. he now that's, says, that's what he I'm says that, He says there's a spirit there of oppression and says when I get on the plane to go back, when I get within 10 mm -hmm. miles of the city, that oppression will come back again. Now I'm feeling the same thing. What it's there. What is it? How is it the devil is abs absolutely able to, to cause us to feel something physical? Uh, he can do more than that. Uh, I got on a plane coming out of Calcutta, India, and uh, across the aisle from me was a very fine-looking fellow, and he, he, he was crying. So I thought he was hurt, so I, I said, uh, it'll be all right. He said, I'm, there's nothing wrong with me. He, he says, I'm a, I think a Newsweek reporter, he said, or something like that. I said, well, what's wrong with you? Well, he says, I don't know. He says, I was in this city for a week, and, and, and I was sad all the time I was there. And says, just now, I just felt it leave. And I was so glad I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Well, I said, I'd like to tell you something, saying that you don't know anything about God. Mm -hmm. uh, you were under demon oppression while you were here. And now that you have left the area, you have come out from under the oppression that oppresses that city 24 hours of every day. Mm. What? What should we, should, should Christians feel this? I mean... Oh, yeah, sure. They should fight it. The problem with the church is they are a giant referral system. That every time a problem comes up, they refer it to somebody else. If an alcoholic walks in, they refer them to the Alcoholic Anonymous. Mm -hmm. If somebody has a nervous breakdown, they refer them to a psychologist. Mm -hmm. uh, they, the, the church today is a giant referral system. They, they, they don't do any business on their own. They're just busy referring people to other, to other sources. But Jesus Christ said, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. And he says, they that have faith in him shall cast out devils, and they shall heal the sick, you see. Mm -hmm. And if we carry on the work of Jesus, oppressions go. You know, it's a strange that you mentioned that. Uh, now, I didn't just get this out. I've had this here all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is, uh, this is from, uh, from U.S. News and World Report. It's unbelievable. <laughs> you can read it. 35 million Americans are depressed in this country. Mm. This is a recent issue. Yeah, that's, that's from U.S. News and World Report. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I was just going through it again over here, uh, uh, looking at it and, and, and studying, studying it over again. The little children are the one that strikes the hardest, especially nine-year-olds. Mm. Yeah. And, and when they get 15, they want to commit suicide. They, they attempt suicide at 15. Okay. And, and it gives the whole story here uh, of, of, uh, of depression, and they don't know what to do with it. When they get to the bottom of it, uh, they, they say that they've got some kind of drug they give them, and it helps them for a while. Oh. Yeah. Thirty-five oh, million. Drug. Now, if a preacher said that, everybody get mad and say, oh, he's a nut. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is, uh, uh, they, if, if you were to pick up that, um, that U.S. News and World Report, the cover of it was this thing here in mm -hmm. color showing you the different parts of the human brain that's under a state of depression. Mm -hmm. Now, the kingdom of God in Romans 14, 17 is righteousness, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, peace, tranquility, and, and joy. And joy. How'd those get here? <laughs> Somebody just brought them up. Is we, right? we keep them on file. <laughs> you, you do. This is two of those 50 books that you've written. These just came out the last few days. Brand new, are they? Yeah. Th this, this has only been out. You know, if people would just read that little book there, 101 Questions on Demon Power, they'd know something. Out of 50 years of ministry, I put together 101 questions that people ask me, you know, about it. Could we get into this book maybe a little later and, yeah, and maybe yeah, ask yeah. and answer some of the questions? Yeah, you sure, you sure can. Okay. For the first time, for the first time, I have uh, uh, written my, my story, you know, my story for His glory. And it's really, it's really exciting. It's really, it's really, excuse can, me for can, saying so. <laughs> you, have you don't have to tell me that. Life. Just some of the stories you've uh, shared on this program make me know that you've had a very exciting life. Yeah, but before we, before we tell the people about sadness, would you, you know, we all doodlers, aren't we? Mm -hmm. I, I doodled on the airplane I was doodling over there <laughs> a few moments ago. And I said, the gloomocrats and the glumocrats had a meeting today. Is this a new political party of some kind? <laughs> uh, sitting on a soft so sofa, they canceled. What shall we say? The gloomocrat said, just look downcast and fill everybody with dread. No, said the glumocrats. Let's moan and groan till everybody will wish they were dead. <laughs> the glumocrats responded, that will, that will make the Bible-believing uh, people see red. The gloomocrats said, the church is a good place to begin. Those folks won't expect us. We'll just sneak in. Mm -hmm. 
So the pulpit and the pew had so many problems they didn't know what to do. The people listened while the pastor moaned, and the pastor listened while the people groaned. <laughs> Into that group came a Bible-believing man came. He preached that Jesus was just the same. He preached that gloom was from below. He said the glum had to go. Those folks took hope in the Word, and with the armor of faith did gird. They shouted the promises of God on high, and praised Jesus that victory was nigh. So the gloomocrats, along with the glumocrats, decided again to meet. They were sad discussing their defeat. They said, then said gloom to glum, my friend, they teach times are better than they've ever been. Now we'll just have to find some other folks, more of our kind. Mm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I shouldn't, that's an original, right? I shouldn't put that on television. <laughs> I do all kinds of doodling. <laughs> that's fresh off the griddle, isn't it? Uh, well, that hadn't been typed yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's a it's good true. word. It uh, really is true. Now, now, that goes very remarkably with, with, uh, with 35 million Americans. It's incredible. In a state of depression. Incredible. Okay, the world says yeah. that they just need what? Psychiatric help or drugs or something? Yeah, but it's the psychologists that commit suicide more than anybody else. Yeah. They lead the way in the suicide, so Did they don't have any answers. Yeah. yeah. They have a, they have a bowl of nuts what? and screws, but they don't know where to put five them. Five <laughs> percent. Would that be one in five? Five percent? Thirty five million? What? Two hundred and forty, fifty Two, million yeah, in America? Two hundred and forty, fifty million. Thirty five million of them. Are, are, what is that? One or in, in a state of depression. Twenty percent. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Yeah. One in five. Now, now you see, uh, no Christian should ever be depressed. You see, I don't go for that. The kingdom of God in Romans fourteen seventeen is God's righteousness, God's peace, and God's joy. Now the kingdom is joy. So when we are born again, we are joy. I'm brother joy. You're sister joy. <laughs> we are joy. Wherever we go, we spread joy, yes. because we are joy. And we are peace. Wherever we go, we bring peace, we take peace, we sh share peace because we are peace. And if we are peace and if we are joy, then we are not troubled and we are not sad. And I've had 50 years of experience of being glad. All the Glory time? be to God. Yes, sir. Uh, you don't ever get depressed. No. Never. I, I, I treat depression just like you treat rattlesnakes. <laughs> Yeah, how's that? Stomp them to death. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Let me ask a question, Brother Samuel. I know we're supposed to be that, but we don't see every Christian fulfilling what you well, just said. Well, that's the reason okay. we're preaching to them right now. All right. They don't know their position in Christ. They haven't... You know, you preachers, listen. You get what you preach. You preach nothing, you get nothing. You see? <laughs> you True. preach history and you got, you got dry, dead Sorry. history. Mm -hmm. You preach life and you have life. Yes. You preach conversion, people get saved. Preach the Holy Ghost, people get baptized. You preach healing, and people get healed. You stop preaching healing, you don't get any healing. True. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. You get what you preach. Well, you preach what you live. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm. And if you don't live it, you can't preach it. Yeah. How, can I, how can I preach joy if I don't have joy? I've got joy. I am joy. I'm... <laughs> Brother Joy. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That's happiness, you see. That, that is happiness. All right, so no, I would resist. I would resist depression just like I resisted adultery. Mm. Yeah, I said, who are you? Who do you think you are? Get out of here! Woo. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes. I, uh, it would be gone just I, that quick. That's right. Yeah. You know, that's a good point, Brother Samuel. We, we, we seem to put that in another category and don't equate it with the other problems that we face. But hmm. you resist it all the same, don't you? You have to. It's from the devil. But when well, you don't know how, it's there. Because I had it 10 oh, years ago. Yeah, if you, but I, if I you wasn't don't know how taught. You need help. Yeah, yeah so they, right. people do need help yeah, to get out of it. You do need but help. once you do, and you know Satan okay. had robbed you of your joy and your peace yeah. and your happiness and even your tears, yeah. then boy, you will never now, let if, him do if it again. If depression comes from sin, you deal with sin first. Yeah. If depression uh, comes from a, a loved one dying, that, you know, you, you grieve for two or three weeks. But the psychologists say that if you grieve more than 90 days, mm -hmm. it's selfishness. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not the death of the loved one. Uh, then, then you're wanting pity. You say self-pity. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you get sick. And then you go into a state of depression, uh, which goes into obsession. 
and can go fully into possession. The devil completely possessing you. So when you see the functions and the works of the evil one, you resist him in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. You don't wait until he overwhelms you. When he's at the gate, you say, don't park here. I'm down the street. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's, let's take that a step further, Brother Summerall. You mentioned one door I know that I'm sure opens the way for depression to many people, the death of a loved one. What are some other avenues that Satan sneaks in through depression? And then let's talk about getting well, rid of it later. Uh, one, one is that he lies to you. He says, you're, you're nothing. Mm -hmm. You're no good. That isn't true. Everybody's good. And any one of us is worth the whole world. Any, any immortal soul is worth the whole world. Jesus so, said so. So they're pretty expensive. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so they're, they're good, but the devil wants the, the esteem that we should have as immortal souls. He wants to say, you're no good, you're nothing. And he's a liar. We, we, we're sons and daughters of the Most High God. We're princes and princesses of the Most High. <laughs> we have the royalty, you see. We should shout and praise God and dance around. Hmm. And... Uh, so he can do it through an emotional situation. Uh, 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 economics can do it, you know. Yeah. You, you can get depressed. But a person shouldn't do that. When I was a boy, my, my father worked in a machine shop all of his life. And he had a piece of steel into the air, hot steel. And it was so long coming down in the, in the railroad shops that he looked up. And when he did, it caught him in the eye. And he was blind in one eye. Mm -hmm. And in those days, they didn't have unions. And the people from the railroad company never came out to see what we needed. So our funds were soon gone. And my mother, being a full-blooded Methodist Pentecostal Christian, she prayed that stuff in. And we kids saw it. She had guts. She'd go and set the table and put water in the glasses when there was no food and command the food to come in. And it would come. It, it, we, oh, yeah. They'd bring it to the front door, all cooked and ready to eat, even. Yeah. Really? That's I right. No, yes, sir. I, I believe that. I know. You better that believe it. It's true. It. I lived through it, you see. Yes. And so I came up with that kind of understanding that you weren't supposed to have a long face. You're supposed to shout the victory. Mm. You see? Okay. We know what we're supposed to do no, no. now. No, no. The same thing can happen to do pe two people. Same thing. One goes up and mm -hmm. one goes down. Mm -hmm. So it's inside of us that makes us depressed. What's the difference? Yeah, by our own decisions, we decided. Uh, yeah, by our own willpower, we decided. The same thing happens to two people. One goes up, one goes down because of their insides. One looks up to God and says, I'm going to praise you forevermore. Like David, if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, you know. And the other says, I'm licked, I'm beaten, I'm destroyed, I'm no good. Boom, into the gutter they go. They come a gloomocrat. Have you ever studied what... Oh, what is that difference, though? Why does one do one thing and one another like that? We're sovereign. God made every human. God, you see, God could have made us automatums. He could have pushed a button and you'd smile. He could have pushed a button and you'd have gone to bed. Pushed a button and you'd have gotten up. You know, but he didn't want to. You cannot get love out of an automatum. You can make a robot, but he can't kiss you goodnight, you know? Right. And God was not satisfied until he had someone that could love him. Now, when you have one that can love, there's the potential of hate. Yes. Or it don't work. Yeah. It don't work. Unless you can hate, you cannot love. It's the same piece of machinery gone negative, you see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so God had to take that chance in order to have love toward him. He had, to, he had to take that chance that there could be hate. Uh, he would put within the heart of every man how to live right. And if he didn't do it, he'd have to say, well, there's some that do, and that pleases me. And on the law of averages, he had to say, well, I created man because enough of them love me and serve me and live with me and will live with me forever. So every person can decide their destiny, whether they go to heaven, whether they go to hell. They've got to decide it within themselves. And you've got to decide, you know, some people get to a, you know, a corner in their car. And because the man in front happens to be looking this way and doesn't go off at 60 miles an hour when the light turns green, he gets a Popeye mad he could die. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I've yeah. seen it. Yeah. And starts rolling down the window and shaking his fist and cussing the people mm -hmm. for three seconds. He cuss them for three seconds and sit and smoke a pipe for two hours after that, doing nothing. <laughs> you know? Well, God didn't make him that way. He made himself that way. Yeah. Every depressed person in America you depressed yourself. 
You let the devil do it to you, and you can come out of it yourself. How? By prayer. Oh, it has to be cast out. Okay. okay. Yeah. Let's talk about that a Yeah, minute. tablets won't take it out. Yeah. Aspirins are in and the rest of them. It can it mask it, it a little, I suppose. They well, make it I don't. Worse. It might. No, it you makes it have worse. Have the belly ache later. Yeah. Yeah. They've just discovered that all these drugs will have after things taken that will destroy your internal organs. Yeah, as Jan just said, they lead yeah. to other drugs, don't they? Yeah, Many well, times. They even, even the aspirin, they say, has a bad effect on certain parts of your organs inside. Okay, let's speak to that person who is in the valley right now. Yeah. And, you know, Jan may be led a little later to share. She was, was there. Lack, she was lack there. of the word, lack of that. knowing the yeah. word yeah, was I my entire that. problem. Yeah, I I and outside circumstances coming against me and yeah. lack of eating properly, you know? That was really a problem. In yeah. the beginning, we used to work here at this studio 16 to 18 hours a day. Yeah. And we was I mean, scrubbing floors, scrubbing windows, everything we did ourselves. And it was just, we'd have someone bring in some Kentucky chicken or something, eat. So it was lack of food, lack of knowledge of the word, and outside circumstances coming yeah. against me. And it cost it. Uh, we'd like to say one little word. Dieting can cause it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. It I, I, I mean, uh, really? the old skinny bones. I don't know that God loves skinny bones so well. <laughs> The Bible talks Say about being again. fat. <laughs> <laughs> Glory be really? to God like us. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> uh, uh, I feel better already. Yeah. <laughs> but, God loves uh, me but, to but, pieces. <laughs> uh, 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 Dr. Gopun Singh in, in Manila, Philippines, had a beautiful daughter. And uh, she decided she was a little overweight and she began to diet. And the first thing you know, a bad nature came to her. She was a pianist, and she took the hammer and tore up the piano, busted it to pieces. She loved the cats, but she took the cats and, and choked them all to death. Mm. And, and, uh, and, and became a, a, a tyrant and a terror to the house. And he heard of me and asked me if I'd come and cast the devil out of her. And, and I went over, and I found her weighing 63 pounds. And they were keeping her alive with intravenous feeding. And, and she had gone so far, she couldn't put anything down, you know. So Satan was trying to kill her then, wasn't he? She'd have been dead soon, yes, yeah. she would. And I just grabbed up in my arms and cast the devil out of her and sat down to a good Chinese meal, meal and poked it into her mouth and told her to get eating it. And, and when she said, I'm going to vomit, and I says, go ahead, I'll pick it up in my hand, put it back in your mouth, and shove it down your throat. I said, I've come here to see you eat. And she hadn't eaten in three months. Did she eat? I shouldn't she have asked. You better believe it. She ate. We, had, we, had, she ate it all. we had 16 courses and she ate all the way through it. And, and now, didn't throw up. No. Oh, no. I walked her in the garden and, and blessed her. And, and she became a beautiful person for the Praise Lord. God. Now you're, and I, and, and she was married right, right here in San Francisco. Uh, I mean, Oakland. She came over here to the university and married a young Chinese man. There's a banker there. I, I performed the wedding ceremony. Now this, this doesn't mean that every person that's depressed is demon possessed. No, no. Now this not. clearly was a case of that. It, it went too far. Yeah. It, it went, and it, it went into not only a depression. It went clear into obsession. You see. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, when I went to see her. She was hiding in the corner, and when I got to her, sir, she pulled out a long butcher knife and hit me with it. Mm. Oh, yeah. That so, sounds so, like possession almost yes, to yes, me. Yes, it was. Yes. But, uh, what about those that are in the depths of depression right yes. now, Brother Samuel? There's what's, 35 million. what's the beginning of the way out? How do they begin right now? There are no beginnings in it. It's just setting them free. First, let you know that Jesus loves you, and that's a miracle to some people, and that Jesus cares, and, and he's interested in you. And the devil has caused you to be sad. The flowers are not sad. <laughs> uh, those beautiful snow-capped mountains, they're not sad. Uh, the, the beautiful waves I hear, they're not. The only thing sad is God's people. <laughs> the, the, the little creatures he created down here, the birds are not sad. They're singing as pretty as ever. Mm -hmm. uh, the only problem is a man, and man's only problem is sin. Mm -hmm. You see? And, and so if we can commit ourselves to God, and, uh, and immediately say sin, somebody says, well, I hadn't committed adultery. Well... The, the, the Bible says that how should you escape if you neglect so great a salvation? Mm. Uh, you don't have to do anything bad. Just sit around and don't do anything and you're lost, you know? <laughs> and and uh, I think television can, can depress people. Oh, I know that. I think that. it's one of the biggest right. depressors. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know Mike Warnke says he was possessed and served Satan by watching a television program named Bewitched? And I always yeah. remember you. Yeah, that's right. God told you that would happen. That's right. That's, that's television. That's right. There are people possessed right. through watching the wrong thing on television. The spirit that they're projecting there comes into that house through that TV set. And our spirit goes out the other end of that TV set in those homes. Yes. Yeah, right. the spirit of love, the spirit of Jesus, the spirit of joy goes right straight out into their homes there.
Praise yeah. God. And you can put this on tape, play it next week. Still got the same joy in it. It's got the mind. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lose it. <laughs> Amen. It doesn't lose it. In a little bit, Brother Summerall, well, maybe right now we ought to just have prayer and just ask God to set people free across America. I know just the law of averages are going to tell you that a lot of those 35 million are watching tonight on this program. Oh, yeah, they're watching. Yeah. Now, now let's go just a little further into it. I, I visit various churches, you know, in my movements about the nation. Uh, sometimes a third of a church where you go is depressed. A church? Yeah. Well, full gospel church, I mean. Yeah. My Why? Goodness. Huh? Why? Well, uh, there's no victory in their life. They haven't been praying. Have it been into the Word of God, studying? Have it been rejoicing? Where's, you know how Smith Wigglesworth told me? Who? Smith mm -hmm. Wigglesworth. Yeah, the great evangelist. Uh, uh, I asked him, I, I went to see him for two years, about every couple of weeks, when I lived in England. And one day, you know, he, he was as sharp as a Philadelphia lawyer. Never saw a hair out of place. And every time he'd open the door, he, he stood like a general. And I'd blink my eyes and say, there he is. <laughs> Old iron sights. Never changes, <laughs> you know? And I said one day, I said, how can you look so beautiful every time I see you? Uh, uh, how come you feel good all the time? And he bellowed at me. He says, Lester, I don't ever ask Smith Wigglesworth how he feels. I said, you are Smith Wigglesworth? He backed off again. He said, I don't ever ask Smith Wigglesworth how he feels. His spirit was dictating to his soul how to feel. Your soul is your mind, right. your emotions, and your will, and that's your Adamic nature. Yeah. Your spirit is your born-again nature, mm -hmm. and his born-again nature, like David. David said, O my soul, why art thou cast down? Rejoice thou in the Lord. He was preaching to himself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was his spirit talking to his soul. Mm -hmm. And his spirit said, Hey, you that are cast down, get up! And do what? Rejoice in the Lord, you see? Yes. Amen. And so his spirit was addressing his soul. We, we like to preach to others. <laughs> do a little good to preach to ourselves. That's yes. right. Amen. I said, Smith Wigglesworth, I said, now nah, just tell me, how do you get up in the mornings? Did you know that men until a few years ago all wore nightgowns? Sure. Did you? And little caps. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I yeah. know that. Yeah, he wore a little nightgown down to his knees here. And he, he said, I'd put my feet on the floor and dance all over my bedroom for 10 minutes. That's the way I get up every morning. I know. Yeah, that's the way I get up. So as I get up, and I, with my nightgown still on, I dance all over the room and say, Jesus, you're good. Jesus, you're wonderful. Jesus, you're holy. I love you, Father. I love you, Son. I love you, Holy Ghost. Oh, glory be to God, I'm so happy. <laughs> he said, for 10 minutes. Sounds like a good way to get up. <laughs> Then, then, then he would shower, go, down, go downstairs, read the Word, several chapters, pray, read the Word, and then all the mail would come in from around the world, dictate his answers to it, and uh, offer a great day in God, living victoriously, joyfully, all the days of his life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, now you, you listen to me. Uh, some of the saddest people I've ever seen were very wealthy people. And some of the happiest people I've ever seen were very poor people. So we are not talking about people that are living in the ghetto. I guess I'm tired of seeing that <laughs> phony. You made it that way. You ought to have to live in it. <laughs> Why don't you paint your house and plant some flowers in your yard and make it pretty, you know? And, and that mess in your front yard represents what's inside of you. Mm -hmm. It's a photograph of you. Why don't you clean it up and make it pretty? I went to Soweto in South Africa the largest black city in the world, and, and the city they used to downgrade that they were almost prisoners yes. there. It's the most, one of the most beautiful cities I've ever seen in my life. Almost every yard has flowers. <laughs> totally black, no whites, no whites. Uh, every, those houses are painted so, so beautiful. Homes, 200000 $300,000 in value. Two great golf courses, not a white face on them. <laughs> it's real pretty. <laughs> to look out there and, and see two big golf courses loaded with black men playing golf out there, swinging and having a good time. I said, hey, that's living. You see, that's living. The mayor, of course, is Pentecostal, full of the Holy Ghost, and that he keeps the others happy by being full of the Holy Ghost. Mm. Mm. Now, right. your, your economic condition does not represent your insides. Your insides represent your relationship with God. Amen. And I tell you another thing. You get wonderfully saved and you'll paint your house. 
Mm -hmm. And you get true. beauty for saving, you'll, you'll plant a few flowers. <laughs> you won't look like the devil out there. Change your looks a little bit. You dress a little different, too, <laughs> don't you? I hope that's, that's what they love me in a minute. <laughs> right. Of course they love you. We, we have not, to love not you. you. Not you, no, I mean. <laughs> We'll no, open the phone I'll lines in a minute. Maybe yeah. ask for a question You know, or two. I've seen that in Haiti. Yeah. When, when the people right. have absolutely nothing, Brother yeah. Summerall, but if they're Christians, their little, high, oh, their little area will yeah. be clean. Yeah. It'll be swept. That's you know, right. they do those little brooms. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be swept. There'll be colored little things That's all right. around them. Even if it's paper. Even mm -hmm. if yeah, it's yeah. paper, they'll make little paper flowers. Yeah. And it you can tell where there's a Christian because yeah. it's clean. Yeah. It's clean. Okay. Anybody you know, can be clean. I saw clean. the most wonderful thing. Very few people have ever seen mm -hmm. what I saw in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I saw 150,000 people get saved in, in six weeks' time. Most of them were poor. And I saw those people as I live with them come from lowest right straight up the ladder. I saw them change their clothes. I saw them change their houses, change their jobs. As the Spirit of the Lord came upon them, and they became genuine Christians, they left off gambling at the cockfights. They, they, they left off having two women they were supporting right. in adultery, and, and, and they left off all of their drinking Cigarette. habits. And suddenly, the children had beautiful clothes, and they come out radiant. But very few people have ever seen 150,000 souls come to Jesus no. and watch Him transform them into the beautiful body of the Lord Jesus Christ until there wouldn't be a sad one among them. Mm -hmm. The sadness was all back there before they found Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, Lester, what you're saying is good, it's true, I receive it, but I want to tell you something. Several years ago, when my little sweetheart was in the depths of depression, for whatever reasons, but she was hurt mm -hmm. by words. I, I could not have just flipped a switch and said, okay, hon, it's all over now. You know, just straighten up, be good now. Do, you, you know, it wouldn't have worked that way. It, uh, no, it, sometimes it, it, it is it, gradual, it, isn't it? It never works that way. Well, no, it doesn't have to be gradual. Uh, she needs uh, a person like myself to sit down and talk to her for an hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and at the end of that hour, before I even prayed, she'd say, you don't really need to pray very much. I've already got most of it. You see, it can happen that fast. Oh yeah, oh you better believe it. Uh, Jesus healed a demoniac in about two minutes. Yes, cast two thousand devils out of him. And oh, so it don't take long to do it. It did eventually, just happened almost overnight. Yeah, two it, different well, miracles. when the deliverance came, uh -huh. it came. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. Honey, share. The Lord gave yeah. her a very wonderful key first, that was a part of yeah, the deliverance. The first miracle came when. Um, we were at our church, and, and all, all my joy, all my tears even, I, nothing was funny, nothing was sad. I was simply like a zombie. I know hell on earth. You cry until there's no more tears, and then nothing is funny, nothing is sad. You're a total zombie. You see things around you. I heard my boys down in the kitchen, and they were trying to even fend for themselves to eat and I remember Matthew came up to my bedroom one day and he would sit on the floor and I couldn't even get dressed and go out of the bedroom and he came to me and he yeah. says mommy he said uh, you know I couldn't swallow my cereal because I didn't have any milk to put on my cereal this morning yeah. and I couldn't even get to the grocery store I couldn't clean I couldn't do anything it was hell on earth in fact Satan showed me myself yeah in a mental institute, mm. in a padded cell, mm. screaming and yelling and writhing. I, I got to that horrible place, and then mm. I thought the only way out was suicide. I thought mm. I would just walk down to the beach and never quit walking. Mm. That would be the end. Mm. And one time, Paul would just make me get dressed and go to church. We were at Santa Ana First Assembly, and we were sitting toward the back, and all of a sudden, uh, the pastor had ministered and I saw a, just a young girl at the altar and she was all by herself down there, a little ragged, pitiful, and nobody else in the whole church seemed to notice her. And the Lord just spoke to my spirit, get mm. up and go minister to her. Mm. And I just said, no way. 
I am, I can't think, I can't see, I can't talk, I can't anything. Mm. And God spoke to me three times yeah. to get up and go minister to that girl. And I kept thinking, somebody will go. The pastor's like, somebody will go. And nobody would. It was as if nobody even saw her but me. Finally, I went up and I knelt down by her. The most pitiful, horrible story came out of that little angel's mouth mm. of what she had gone through. Mm. million times worse off than I ever could have been in this life because mm. of her background. Mm. And I ministered to her. And when I got home, and that night, after I had ministered to someone worse off than me, I had mm. given what I needed, mm. and I didn't even know what I was doing at the time. That night, I was watching Channel 40, happened to be on at that time, and someone came on playing that little old rickety organ in there, just singing and playing, grace, grace, God's grace. <laughs> grace that can pardon and cleanse from sin and cleanse within. And that was the first time that my tears came back. But I had had to give what I needed, mm. ministry. And then that was the beginning of my tears and I could cry again. And then a few days later, in the middle of the night, God gave me a beautiful dream. I had never been to Israel at the time. And I saw Jesus on the Sea of Galilee with the twelve disciples saw ships, the older ships, and I was standing watching, just standing there crying all by myself. And all of a sudden I saw one of the disciples walk over to Jesus and he said something to him. And Jesus began to talk to them around him and I couldn't hear what they were saying, but another one came up and talked and they were smiling and laughing and all of a sudden they begin to laugh, just laugh and laugh and mm. laugh. That beautiful joy. And in the middle of the night in my dream, I woke up and mm. sat up in the middle of bed laughing. Mm. And God brought my joy yeah. back through yeah. really a dream. Both of them were a miracle. A uh, few years later, we had the privilege of going to Israel. And all of a sudden, as the bus was driving down the Sea of Galilee, I never knew where I was in my dream. I never knew because I'd never been there. And all of a sudden, the Sea of Galilee opened up, and I saw, and this whole miracle of the vision of Jesus giving me, or the dream that he, I, he had given me, I saw, and I walked to the very place where Jesus had been sitting when he healed me. Mm. But it took two miracles, one, me doing something, mm. and two, then just a dream and a miracle just from God. Mm. But it was... It's torment. It's hell. I guess it's what hell. I'm after, Brother Summerall, is if, if there's not a Lester Summerall around to open the Word and, you know, poke the food down their mouth or whatever has to be done. Or deliver them. You know, or pray the prayer of deliverance. What, what can people do? Well, now, you, you see, that's what I teach all over our country right now, that God needs a million deliverers right now because of the need of the world. And, and, and the Great Commission in, in Mark chapter 16 uh, and... Uh, it says, they that have faith shall cast out devils. Uh, well, um, you either believe it or you don't believe it. It's a great commission. Jesus said it. it's the last thing he ever said on the earth. And so every one of us should be a deliverer. Maybe the, the scripture that my, my people are destroyed because of ignorance, you know, mm -hmm. lack of knowledge. Very. is uh, you got to get this into the pastor's hearts first. If they don't believe and they don't have faith, how are the people going to have faith, you know? And, and so, uh, but... Uh, if, if we teach the Word of the Lord that people can be free, well, they get free. I haven't found anybody yet I couldn't set free. I mean, I can set anybody free if they want to be free. If they want to be. If they want to be free. Yeah. And I think everybody can. I think you can. Your wife can. These men, I think anybody can. We do it as children of God. We, we got to know the devil doesn't want us to know our supremacy in Christ, our authority in Christ. Mm -hmm. that, that, that he's afraid if that, if that ever gets into the laity, they are, they, are, they are giant killers, you know? Who? He's in trouble. All right, Brother Summerall, I have an idea. Okay. There are many people on the other side of that lens that need to be set free right now. Okay. Let's set them free. All right, we're ready. Okay. If you are in a state of depression or obsession or possession and so forth, uh, Jesus loves you and he will set you free. In John chapter 8, it says, Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Jesus will set you free. If you will receive it, 
He'll set you free right now. Amen. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, if you will receive it. You don't have to be sorrowing over those that are dead. You can't do anything about it. You really don't have to be sorrowing deeply for any other person because they have a right to go to heaven or hell if they want to. All you can do is pray for them. The Bible teaches us to take our burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Amen. The Bible says He is the burden bearer. If you're going to bear them, He can't bear them. You have to relieve them to Him before He can bury them. If you've committed a sin of some kind, ask God to forgive you and let's be free. We're going to believe God <laughs> that thousands will be set free in the next moment of time. Paul and I will agree together. Amen. By the blood of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. Amen. and the power of the resurrected Lord we do agree on the authority of the Great Commission, Jesus Christ. I set you free. Amen. <laughs> Glory be to God. I set your mind free. Come out Amen. right now. Sadness, go. Amen. Depressions, go. Yes. Obsessions, leave. Glory. You're not from God. I command you to go. Amen. In Jesus' name, go. I believe you, Lord, to set the woman free there yes. right now. I believe you to set the children free. Amen. So much is being pointed at them today in this world that we live that they are not able to bear. Set the children free. Yes. In Jesus' name. I ask, Lord, that every sorrowing heart will be healed by your power right now. Sorrow, leave. Because he brings gladness into every heart. And we ask you right now to bless each person, each friend, each man, each woman, each child. In this moment, we command it to be a moment of mighty deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ, be free from sadness and depression right now. If you will receive Jesus as your Savior, <laughs> in Calcutta, India, I was preaching in a large auditorium, and a very handsome Hindu man uh, came the first night I was there to the altar. And with him was a child that couldn't walk. It was his little son, four or five years old. His little legs dangled. He had never walked. And he, he would point at the child and hand him up with the most agonizing look you've ever seen. And I looked into his eyes. I prayed for the others. I looked into his eyes and I said, you come back tomorrow night. He thought I was so cruel, you know. The next night he was there, he listened. When I asked the people to come forward, he came forward holding this little child of his up in his arms that couldn't walk and that had never walked. He had a red spot there and he was a practicing Hindu and, and uh, all he wanted was a miracle in that little boy's life. So I looked at him and smiled and I said, you sir, come back tomorrow night. He looked at the others that I'd prayed for and got blessed and I, I know he was thought I was a, a really a hard person. And, and the next night, he was so handsome you couldn't miss him. There he was with that poor little thing in his arms, his little child. When I asked for the sinners to come forward, up he came. And holding up that little child, I prayed for the others. Then I came to him. I said, sir, are you now ready to abandon 300 million gods that are no gods at all and receive Jesus Christ into your heart, the living emancipator of the human race? He said, after hearing you for three nights, I am. <laughs> yeah. I said, put that little thing in your arms on the floor. And I brought him up close to me and led him personally in a sinner's prayer, deep sinner's prayer, until joy began to flow out of him and his face changed and his eyes opened and he said, yes, yes, I do love Jesus Christ. He is in my heart. And as he was confessing it, he said, where is my boy? And I said, oh, there he is. He was walking by himself all over the place. Now, if I had prayed for that boy the first night and he had been healed, 
I'd never seen that Hindu again. He just said an American passed by. We'll, we'll make an idol to him like we did Gandhi soon and put it on our little prayer shelf and, and worship him. And I would have become one of his gods. But by saying, no, I know you're here for the bread and the fish. I'm not giving you any. You come back and hear some more. And by the time I brought him back three times, and when I saw he was ready, I personally led him to the Savior as if there was nobody present but him and me. And while he was coming through to a beautiful salvation, his boy was healed Praise by the God. power of God. Now, what I mean is this. Yes, God can remove your, uh, your sadness. and God can, re God can remove uh, your depression. But it'll be back tomorrow if you don't love Jesus and serve Jesus. And this is the gift of God we're talking about. Not the gift of the Democrats or the Republicans. <laughs> They'll give you sadness. <laughs> but this is the gift of God we're talking about. And you, God doesn't run a charity hospital for the devil. If you want miracles from God, you have to love God. Amen. And you have to serve God. He can't, he can't, he can't afford to do that. Yeah. If you're ready to give your heart to Him, man, I just feel you being set free. I feel gladness coming up in you strong. Now, what you need to do is to shout all over your living room there <laughs> and start praising God. I know the neighbors have never heard it before. That's a, it'll be a sweet noise. Start rejoicing. And when you do, that thing will be gone. It will be broken. Now, let me whisper something to you. And you religiocrats won't like this. <laughs> Religion can bring this depression. That's right. mm -hmm. You go to a sad Absolutely. meeting and, and you hear sad songs and sad prayers and sad preaching and you walk out of there, you're a sad person. You know? But, uh, religion can be depressing. And, and no, they, they say, oh, don't go to that church over there. They shout and praise God. That's the only one to go to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the only one to go to. You know, you know, some of you people amaze me with your intelligence. I mean, the lack of it. Uh, when, when you go to buy a dress, you go to the most beautiful store in the city. If you go to buy groceries, you go to a supermarket. You go to buy gas, you go to a big, beautiful station. Not one of you will pull up to a station like I saw today that was all boarded up, closed down, they had wood around the, the, the tanks outside and nobody was there. Wouldn't you look pretty? Drive in with your car, start honking the horn. Honk, honk, honk. Why don't I get gas? Honey, they don't have any. <laughs> well, that's like the church you go to. They hadn't had any gas in 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still in there honking your horn. You know? Honk, honk. Why don't I get blessing? They hadn't had any in 40 years. You see, I go to this church because Grandma went here. Honey, if Grandma was living, she wouldn't go there. <laughs> she had more sense than that. <laughs> I better ask them if they love me now. <laughs> uh, do you all still love Lester? Uh, we'll <laughs> open the phones up in just a minute here. <clears throat> Phone, phones are ringing. People are finding Christ. Uh, Share some of them. I have a special burden for Southern California. I come out here more often maybe than you, than you realize. And I'll be here three or four more times this year. I have a feeling, I don't know exactly how to describe it, that God wants to make me a blessing. Not, not, a, not as an evangelist, possibly. I do give an altar call when I teach. But, but to teach the people. Now, 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 tomorrow morning at 9.30, we begin there in the Anaheim Convention Center. And I'm going to teach tomorrow morning how to cope with unbelief. You know, most people don't know how to handle unbelief. That's right. They don't even know what causes unbelief. Mm -hmm. Now, Norval Hayes and I will be there. It's the longest crusade we've ever held in a place that cost over $2,000 a day to use a room. Mm. Uh, but I feel that, that there are so many beautiful people in this area that it may be that God is tuning them up for a great world revival yes. and it's going to burst out of this place yes. and God's going to have them ready to go. I believe, I believe that's it, Brother Samuel, yeah. because Jan and I were talking about this 
When you come into the Los Angeles area, there isn't that same heaviness and that mm -hmm. same oppression you feel in New York. Well, no wonder. You, you, you've got a million more Christians than they've got yes, back there. Yeah. Right. They'll hardly have a good church in the whole city. Sad. You know? Sad, yeah. And look at the unbelievers. Look at that United Notions back there. <laughs> Just full of the devil. United you know? Notions? <laughs> they haven't had an idea since they were born. <laughs> uh, you know, it is depressing, you know? Yeah. That's the truth. Uh, but, uh, well, I haven't, I have, I, I have, you know, 25 or 30 invitations a day uh, to, to go places to minister. I seldom ever hear from New York City. I, I will have 50 invitations to the Los Angeles area uh, to one in New York. Well, that's going to change. Yeah. <laughs> Channel 54 is on the air. Oh, yeah. I want to tell you something we did. I got to tell us for this. <clears throat> we found out, Brother Summer, this is going to bless you, and I want to find out from you what you think about this. I think I know. The mountain top on which the transmitter for Channel 54 is is huh. called Illinois Mountain. And we understood on good authority and from some of the old timers that a man by the name of Alistair Crowley, a man from England that was a witch. Called uh, himself the Beast. He call, yeah, called huh. himself the Beast. He was a Satanist. Hmm. Had dedicated that mountain and other mountains around it to hmm. Satan. Hmm. Well, when I was over, we were both over in Israel, by the way, about the same time. Yeah, you were over there ago. just a few days ago. Yeah. The Lord impressed me to bring back a chunk of Mount Calvary, and I picked up a great big rock, and I carried it back with me. And we went up on top of Illinois Mountain, mm -hmm. and we had a... Well, I guess you can deliver mountains, can't you? We sure... Oh, yeah. We sure did it. Yeah, yeah, there's we sure. dug a hole, and we... And I know there's nothing magical about a piece of a rock from Israel. It's a probably made out of the same stuff the rocks are over here. <laughs> but I just wanted it to be a symbol to the Christians of that area and to the devil himself. And we dug a hole and planted a chunk of Mount Calvary hmm. on top of Illinois Mountain. Glory. And we had a prayer meeting up on top of that mountain. And <laughs> we, it was great. The That's, glory of the oh, Lord yeah, came that down. Great. Yeah. And, uh, Is that good? Sure, it's good. Praise Everything's God. good. Bless God forever. <laughs> <laughs> just keep doing good things. Now, what's not good is just sitting and doing nothing. That's not good. Amen. But any, any positive action is good. I believe in any positive action. I just believe in it. Paul and I were yeah. just walking up at Lake Arrowhead, the little beautiful place we have here, and it's another mountain. And I've heard the weirdest things that go on up there because Mike Warnke was in Satanism up there. And we were just walking up mountain. Every step I took, I just was saying, God, I just take this back for you. Lord, I just praise you for it. We were just walking up there. I was just taking that whole mountain, just everywhere my sure. little foot walked. I was just claiming it and taking it back in Jesus. We Let me ask you something. We have let this world and we know we've let it slide yeah. is there a place for anger for Christians to get angry you were talking about joy and peace and but isn't there a place for anger anger but not hate no yeah anger you love, is the one I mean you love but your insides like Jesus when, yes. he's, when he saw them in the temple Messing buying and selling anger rose up in him but if any one of them had fallen into the speedy to save him right there. Of course. Not hate. Yes. Anger. No, not hate. But That's hate, different. not hate, yeah. what, Where can we rightly use anger in this world today? Towards sin? Towards Satan? The, towards things? Yeah. And that people? That are right? And people. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you were talking about declaring joy and peace and happiness. There yeah. we go. But I think that sometimes Christians need to get angry at things they see. Francis Schaeffer's written a new book and get angry and say, no, I yeah. won't take this anymore. I will stand here yeah. and box back. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you have to have emotion yeah. in here yeah. to have motion. Yeah. <laughs> and so when that emotion yeah. arises in me, I see a little baby in Haiti dying with their tongue hanging out from starvation yeah. and kiss that little baby as it dies of mm. starvation. Anger rose in me at Satan, mm. and I did something about it. Mm. So there is a righteous anger yeah. that we should have. We kind of right. forget that, don't we? I don't know. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not accusing you of forgetting no, it. <laughs> yes, <all right. laughs> but I can see where people do. They yeah. do. They kind of yeah. get, oh, well, you yeah. know. But, well, the devil tells them they can't do anything about it, and he's a liar. They can do something about it. That's right. Yeah. You know, one little quick question before we take a break here, Brother Summerall. When we went to New York, honey, mention that little lady that said to us there at the New York station that we didn't really... We went in naive. Well, what yeah, did she, she say? She came up to me one night and she said, I have a message to you from the Lord and said, the way you're going to know it's from the Lord is the Lord gave me your full name. 
She said, your name is Janice. And I never used that name. I said, yes, it is. She said, well, the Lord wanted you to know that this was from him. And she told me, she said, the Lord told me to tell you that you have come into New York very naive as to what you are attacking and what you have undertaken. And that um, Satan is going to try to kill you both. And that you must get into the word and know the word and uh, know your authority more than you ever have. How do you judge that? How do you feel about uh, a statement Well, like if that? It was, she'd have told me that, I'd have said you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've, I've been in all the big cities of the world fighting the devil, and we know him, and we're not afraid of him. He is a defeated foe. The footsteps of the footprints of Jesus are on the back of his head, and, and, and he is defeated. <laughs> yeah, and we're not afraid of him at all. And uh, I really don't believe that of you people. You, you, you've been in the truth for so long until you know the, the, the master said that when you go to take a prey, you first bind the strong man. Mm -hmm. Now, if missionaries had known that before they went to the mission field, they wouldn't have gotten sick and discouraged and defeated out there, you see. Mm -hmm. They didn't know it. So they got one out there, and the devil whipped them down, diseased their children and all that business. Uh, but uh, if you go to take a prey, now you've gone to New York to take a prey. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, you've gone to New York to take a prey. And, and so every time you get on that station, you should say, I bind all the powers of the devil. And all, and all the powers of evil religion that's in this place. And all the powers of dead religion in this place. And I bind all the forces of the devil and command it to be subservient to me, the ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. That he is raised from the dead and, and, and he has the powers of heaven and earth and I'm his. Glory. And we're winners. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to stop sinning to the ground. All right. Well... I'll tell you one thing. Uh, if I'm afraid of the devil, I don't know it. No, you're not. I don't, yeah. I don't accept that. Yeah. Uh, and somebody knowing her name don't mean much either. All right. Some Good. people are too close to Sue saying. Sure, sure, sure. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we we'll be back in about a minute uh, for some more. A good discussion with Dr. Lester Summerall here. He has written a book entitled 101 Questions and Answers yeah. on Demon Powers by Lester Summerall. I'm going to ask him some of these questions. I think some questions are coming in through the telephones right now, but my goodness, honey, <laughs> what's happening on the phone? Larry phones? from Vienna, Illinois. Uh, Terry Salvations? From, yes, from El Dorado, Illinois. Bob from Dayton, Ohio. Jeannie from Pom uh, Pompano, Florida. David from Guthrie, Oklahoma. Medina, New York. 12 years old, Jerry from Phoenix, Keith from Orange, mm. Layton, Ohio, Paul, here's Ed from Phoenix, Bessie from Miami Beach. By the way, this that meeting. prayer you prayed just a moment ago went all over New York. That's right. We're on yeah. New York, Channel 54 right now. Mm. May it lift the uh, a couple of the stations have to break away right now. For most of you, we'll be right back in about 30 seconds with another hour of Praise the Lord. Till then, God loves you, we love you. The devil's defeated, and remember, let everything that has breath keep on. Praising the Lord. We're so glad you've been with us for Praise the Lord. If you haven't asked Christ into your life, call our prayer partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Our 24-hour prayer partner line is 714-731-1000. If you'd like an audio cassette of Praise the Lord, please write and ask for program 630-83. That's 630-83. If possible, tuck in a love gift to help defray the cost of the tape ministry. TBN has a worldwide ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small, to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So write today, praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Paul and Jen would like to thank you for your prayers and financial support. You keep us on the air. Thank you. This is Jim McClellan saying, God bless you. And remember, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. This program was brought to you by the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout the United States of America. Welcome back to another exciting hour of Praise the Lord with your host, Paul and Jen Crowd. Welcome back to this hour of Praise the Lord. Some stations have joined the network right now as well. Hello, Channel 26, San Francisco, and other places along the network out in Hawaii. 
uh, you need to hear in some of these areas the word that we'll be sharing with Dr. Lester Summerall, our very special guest on the program today. We've just had a good hour of ministry with him, and we're going to move right along for a few more minutes here, talking about his brand new book entitled 101 Questions and Answers on Demon Powers by Lester Summerall. So if the devil's bothered you any time in your life, you have tuned to the right station right now because we're going to tell you how to defeat the old boy and put your foot on his neck. I like that. The footprints of Jesus are all over the back of his head. <laughs> yeah, they haven't been erased. All right. The Lord be to God Ooh, forever. True. Praise God. Oh. Let's sing a song right now, and then we're going to get back. A few of you would like to maybe make a phone call and ask a question. We'll get to as many of them as we possibly can in the next 20 or 30 minutes. David Saff is here to sing with us. Now, you're being blessed by this tonight, aren't you, David? You won't forget that one either. Come on, everybody. Let's keep on believing with David Saff. God bless you, David. Just keep on believing and don't give up, he'll see you through. Cause it's not his way to leave you all alone. Keep on believing the fear. The times when I'm tested, I remember it's not his way to leave us on our own. He said he would never leave us, and he said if we'll be true. There's nothing that he won't do. You just keep on believing. Your faith will see you through. I believe that for us today. You gotta keep on believing in what he'll do for you. not his way to leave you all no, no. Just keep on believing the victory will come. Listen to me. There are times when sickness comes with its pain but the prayer of faith will heal and the Lord will raise you up. That's just what the Bible says. And the word of God is true. What he said he's going to do for you. You just keep on believing. There's healing right now. You believe it for it today. Hallelujah. Keep on believing in what He'll do for you. Just receive it right now. Keep on believing and don't ever give up. He'll see you through. Yes, He will. Because it's not His way to leave you. All by yourself, <laughs> he won't leave you. Keep on believing. Don't stop believing. You gotta keep on believing. The victory will come. Here's what you do. Keep on. Thank you, David.
lot of people are doing just that right Don't now. Forget, David has a beautiful album out with Amen. all of these songs, and uh, you can call us here and we can get you in touch there with him is. about that album. It's very special. Beautiful voice. I he just... wrote There Is a River that Jimmy Swaggart made Isn't so that Yes, that Jimmy Swaggart made uh. it so famous. In fact, if you'll call now, we'll uh, see that you get information on this, and we'll send your name and information over to David, and he'll get in touch with you. Uh, one of the most often questions, often asked questions, Brother Summerall, and I notice you've dealt with it in your book here, I've heard this many times, is it dangerous to talk about the devil? Well, uh, <laughs> when we went to war uh, against uh, Hitler, uh, did our generals stand up before the soldiers and say, now it's, it's dangerous to talk about Nazism. <laughs> you might get hurt. Mm. Or, or, Hitler. or Hitler. Or Hitler. Mm -hmm. Would they have won the war? No. You see? It's dangerous for the devil for you to talk about it because you will explore his lies. He is defeated. He's on the ground. The only power he has is usurped. He doesn't have any native power in his own anymore. Jesus destroyed it. So the only power he has is what you loan him or give him or surrender to him, you see. And, and so when, when the Word of God says to rebuke him and he flees, not, not to flee is not to crawl or, or, or walk or run. And to flee means to run with terror. That's what the word means. So if he runs in a frightened state of mind from us, why should we be afraid of him? All right. Yeah, why should, we, why should we be afraid? If he's afraid, why are we afraid? Mm. And when we are clothed with the holiness of God and with the love of God and the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus, there is no demon, there is no devil that can withstand us. We're a marching army. But if you don't talk about it, he has advantages. Mm. Mm -hmm. I have discovered so many things. You know, I, I was brought up in, in the assemblies of God all my life, and, and I'd preached for three years, and I never heard one sermon about the devil. That's right. No, I didn't that's either. Right. No. no that's and true. when I got out to Indonesia, and he began to mop the floors with me, <laughs> I said, wait a minute here. I didn't come out here for this. <laughs> mm. And God taught me how to handle him. Well, I'd never heard a sermon on it, never read a book on it, and God showed me how to handle him. And, and so, clear around the world, God just showed me from country to country, that I was not there in defeat, and I could call his hand any time. Mm -hmm. and, and people that were in fits, I'd say, come out of it, and shut up and sit down. And it was finished, you know? It, it, he has to obey. Yeah, he had to obey. I but you have to know your enemy before you can defeat him. Yeah, you, you certainly do. Uh, if you don't know him, a real comical thing took place. I went up <laughs> in the Philippines and dedicated a little church I'd made for the headhunters and I, in, a, in a tribe, and I went up to dedicate it it didn't cost but two thousand dollars for the whole thing. It was a concrete floor and, and a metal roof and so forth. And before I got there, they had decided to destroy me. And they took the the head witch, which was a woman, and told her to, to destroy me in that meeting. And, and so when they began to sing in the meeting, I didn't know anything about it. I was just as innocent as anything. I didn't know anything about it. And so when the meeting began, she began to say, oh. She was in the back. Oh. 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 And <laughs> nobody did anything about it. You know, I thought she had to bellyache, you know? <laughs> and uh, so I just sat and looked at it. But when I set up to preach, she got up. And it's, and the answer, I said, hey, you're, you're, you're fighting me. You're not just got the tummy ache, you know? And I turned around to her in a second of time. I said, you shut up. And you sit down and don't you move. Did you know two days later she hadn't said a word yet? <laughs> you left her that way. Yeah. <laughs> two days later she hadn't said a word. That God. evil power had to obey. It obeyed. Yeah. yeah. That is yeah. That's, super. That's interesting. Oh, those people were ready to serve God when their chief witch not only sat down but couldn't speak. They, 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 they knew there was a bigger power around than her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And it isn't that we have anything, Paul. No, it's that Jesus it's that has it. Jesus. That's right. If we can put our life into focus with Jesus, it's great. Is there a potential is a danger, though, Brother Summerall, for even Christians that aren't living 
the life that aren't really where they ought to be with God. Is there a, a danger area out there somewhere where you're vulnerable to Satan? I don't know about danger. Uh, I, I have discovered that, uh, uh, that if you don't respect him, you, you can't, uh, you know, in, in Jude, it says that uh, the Satan and Michael uh, had a great quarrel about the body of Moses. Mm -hmm. and, and it says, Michael dare not bring railing accusation against him, but said, the Lord rebuked thee. Yes, the Lord. Now, if an archangel don't dare downgrade him, and you know, then we, we can't either. If you speak a lie, if you say, you go back to hell where you came from. Well, he's a prince of the power of the air. He don't live down there. He mm -hmm. came from heaven. He's he a really prince of the power of the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he came out of heaven. Mm -hmm. He didn't come out of hell. Mm -hmm. And so when you don't speak the truth, he don't have to move. And, and so a lot of people ask for things to happen, but they don't, you know, they don't have the qualifications well, for it. Okay, if Michael yeah. didn't dare say anything, yeah. how do we and you and I dare then? Oh, he said plenty. He, he, he got the body of Moses away from him, but he didn't come in his name. He said, Jehovah rebuked thee. Mm -hmm. You see? But he didn't, he didn't say, old slew foot with the long tail and the forked horns. Uh, I, I got to tell you something. He didn't do that. He said, he said, Satan, Jehovah rebuked thee. I, I come in the name of Jehovah. You're defeated, and I'm taking, I'm taking this body. And he went off with it. Mm -hmm. You see? The only thing I'm saying is he is an archangel. He is the prince of the power of the air. We are not to make jokes about it. We're not to play with it. We are to be sincere about it. And we are to come in truth, you know, in truth. And when you come in truth, I come in the name of Jesus and by the power of his blood and upon the authority of the Great Commission. And that's the only way I come. Mm -hmm. And he understands that. Yeah. Then I don't come in my name nor my power. Let me ask you something. Okay. Uh, I've read this many times. It says, Yet Michael, one of the mightiest of the angels, when he was arguing with Satan about Moses' body, mm -hmm. did not dare to accuse even Satan or jeer at him, but simply said, The Lord God rebuke you. Uh, now That's this, much stronger than the King James. Right? Yeah, it is. But now, let me ask you this. Since Jesus defeated him on Calvary, mm -hmm. does that make our position a little stronger than Michael's? Because uh, this was he was talking about a time when... Uh, Moses lived on the earth, and after that, Jesus defeated Satan. At that time, Satan did have dominion over the earth. And Jesus took that dominion away from him, gave it to us. Now, do we have a little more power over him than no, maybe? I think God's people always had the power. I don't think it's a matter of power. Uh, you know, God is a, a great God. And, and if a man's a king, God respects him as a king, you know? And, and uh, Lucifer is a prince. Yes, he was. That's he is a prince, and he is the prince of the power of the air. And, and if you come with a wrong spirit, saying, saying things that are not even true, no, then you have no power to, 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 to no. remove him. You, need you come power. clean, and you speak the truth. And it doesn't matter what an elevated person he is. He is a defeated person. Right. And so he has to accept the defeat of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we remind him of it, and we defeat him. He has no power to resist. He has no power to resist. The Lord we have God no right, you. no yeah. where in the Bible, not one place, does it say to be afraid of him. No, it's true. Amen. No. Amen. No, we're not afraid. And Glory. you can always come with the Lord God rebuke you, yeah, that's Satan. Right. That's, that's as right. scriptural as can be. That's right. <laughs> well, and I do use but it. there's <laughs> even more than that, and that's Luke 10.10. 10. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you, yeah. his yeah. disciples, right. power over all the power of the devil, that's and right. nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hurt you. Uh, let's answer a few questions here quickly right. that have come in from partners. Why do demons make people sick? Well, uh, the only reason that... I'd like to give you an hour on it, you see. <laughs> uh, demons uh, have no relationship to a human being. For example, they don't know how you feel about a problem. If, if there was an ant hill here and a million ants and I took my foot and screwed it around until I'd messed up their home, I have no idea how they feel about that. They might be cussing me in ant language, you see. <laughs> and, and I have no idea because I'm not an ant. Now, and, and so the devil has no idea how you feel about anything. He's never been a human. He hates God. He, has, he knows how God feels. He hates God, and he sees that God loves us. And so what he wishes to do is to hurt God. So in the hurting of you, he says, see, see what I did? You, you love this thing. See, see what I did? Mm. Now, now, Jesus became a man in order to love you. 
if Jesus had never become a man, heaven wouldn't have had to help you bear your burdens and bear your sorrows. So Christ became a man in order that he might lift you out of your sorrow. When you have a problem, he says, I had it too. When you have a sorrow, he says, yeah, I had the same one. He has been identified with every human problem there is, you see. And because of that, he can lift you out of your problems. And, and so Satan, really, he's not so angry with you. He's angry at God, and you're the target. He can't get to God. And so he wants to hurt you. But God says, don't let him do it. Crack him back. <laughs> and you can do that. Amen. Yeah. Good this answer. is a good one. Here's one from Gladys. She's very tormented. She said, my husband died uh, May the 4th, and ever since then I have heard a deep breathing in my bedroom. Can you tell me what that is? It's a spirit. Uh, it's a familiar spirit. Now, uh, 10,000 times the devil has said to me, I'll manifest myself. I'll manifest myself. And I said, oh, no, you don't. You're not permitted to manifest yourself. I didn't need to see you. I don't need to know anything about you. The Bible tells me everything I needed to know about you, and I used the Word of God to defeat you. And so I will not permit you to manifest. Do not permit any manifestation of the devil. We used to have a group going around that they wanted to cast the devil out of you and make you puke, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was the biggest bunch of nonsense you've ever seen because it was a spirit, not a body, you see? And... and uh, I'd been in those meetings, and I'd say, stop it. And they would immediately stop it. I says, we permit no manifestation. We only tell you to get out. And you're a spirit, so hurry before we get hard on you, you know? <laughs> and, and, and we just command them to go. And it's finished. You know, it's, it is it's a finished thing. You do. Now, whenever there's anything like that, rise up and say, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come against you. By the strength of of the great resurrected Savior, I come against you, and I command you to get out of this house. This is God's house. You won't ever be back. He, he says, I'm not welcome right. there anymore. Right. Praise God. Fantastic. Another question? Another one. Beautiful. Yes, that's not your husband, and it's not from God. The God don't mess around with stuff like that, breathing in the dark. And, and, and so it's the <laughs> devil. So command it never to come back. I love it. You're so cute. I just love it. I just love him. I love it. You know, I got a hold of a book the other day, and here are the actual words that were used by Jesus and the disciples when he was dealing with demon-possessed people. Come out, you unclean spirit. That was when the uh, oppressed uh, maniac was there. Um, the blind and the dumb, he healed. Uh, the one that dashed himself and foamed and grind and got rigid, he said, Come out, you dumb and deaf spirit, I command you, and never enter him again. Yeah, that's right. That was the Lord's words. Um, and then the unclean demon, he said, Be silent and come out of him. To one that was bent over the spirit of infirmity, he said, You are free. To another, he says, I charge you in the name of Jesus to come out. Those are the mm. actual words that Jesus mm. and the disciples yeah, used right. to deliver them. Use the same um, words and it works. Yeah, the yeah. same words. Yeah. You have to know the word, <laughs> yeah. find it in the word. You don't have to roll them on the floor and massage them. No. No. Our, you, you don't mess around and talk to the devil for a half an hour. You don't ask him, how many are you? <laughs> well, he's a liar. He'll say there are 14 and there's only two, you know? Yeah, yeah. So why ask a liar anything? Just tell him to come out. Yeah. No, we had an experience we like that. Did. I have to make a little confession here. Really? In fact, a very grievously demon-possessed really? woman came into our uh, studio here one night. And uh, he finally delivered. we were ignorant. We didn't know. And, and she rolled around and foamed at the mouth and did all kinds of things. And we cast demons after demons after demons. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, and she would have a, a period of uh, relief after commanding a spirit to leave. Have you seen that? That they oh, will yeah. come out and then yeah, they'll be yeah. all right and breathe and then they'll come back on them again? Yeah, yeah, what yeah. is that, more demons? Uh, no, that, that's them uh, permitting, uh, re permitting the thing to attack them again. Yeah. Well, this You've woman... You've got to teach them how to resist the devil. This woman had come from a long line of Buddhist healers mm -hmm. And, of course, it was, uh, uh, you know, in her family for generations. Mm. But she wanted, or at least she said, she wanted to be delivered. Mm. And uh, she would cry and weep, and then that awful spirit would come mm. on her again. Mm. Well, all I can say is that we did all we knew to do. This has been some years ago. So I got a hold of Brother Summerall and, 
And I'll never forget, uh, and by the way, I think I told you the good testimony. Uh, I saw this woman's pastor not long ago, and the woman is absolutely still, absolutely free. But Brother Summerall took her in a room upstairs over here in Studio A, and uh, we could hear him all over the building. <laughs> As he spoke to you that have evil to get spirit. The devil's attention, you know. <laughs> well, you got he his and ours deaf. that day. And, uh, Is he deaf or stubborn? He's hard of hearing, yeah. He's stubborn. <laughs> yeah. But anyhow, Brother Summerall dealt with that thing, and the woman is free. Amen. She's delivered. Her pastor, I bumped into him uh, not long ago, and he said, She's in the church. She's worshiping the Lord. She's working in the church, yes. and she is absolutely free and delivered from that thing. Uh, Paul, what, what do you want me to urge the people to come and hear me teach right this, this week? Right now. Tell them one more time. Yeah. It, it's it's in Anaheim in the, in the California room, and uh, Norval Hayes and I will be there together three times a day, and tomorrow morning at 9.30 I will begin the teaching, and I'm going to teach on how to cope with unbelief. And then Norval is busy uh, over in Phoenix. He may not be there for the afternoon service. And if not, then, you know, every time I get a chance, I preach. And, and so in the afternoon, I'll be talking about how, how you can be, how you can cope with depression. You know, it needs a little more time. And, and, I'll, and then I'll be praying for you to be set free. You know what I'm and we're going to be there nine days. And we're going to believe God to just bless and love a lot of people. I'm going to give you these, Brother Summer. Right. And people can come out. And you could answer these in okay. one of your sessions. All because right. there are many, many, many questions hmm. that we can't get to tonight. Okay. But we have had so many beautiful salvations. Here's Rosalie and Virginia and David and Sandy from Duarte. Patricia from North Providence, Rhode Island, hmm. 27. Sherry from Carlsbad, Aurora, Miami Beach, Hawthorne, Los Angeles. Isn't it beautiful? Keep calling. <laughs> Those of you that want deliverance, want to be set free, beautiful prayer partners are on the line waiting to talk with you and pray with you right now. When we come back, Jan is going to take you to prison. Yes. Hmm. And show you a miracle. A miracle. Glory. Absolutely. It is beautiful. You are just going to be blessed beyond measure when you see a man actually receive Christ as his Savior and get set no, free. No, no, this is Roman. This is Roman. That was Lee McVeigh. Oh, Roman. This is We're going to go see yeah. Roman Stone yeah. tonight. Yeah. Oh, you got a letter from him recently, yes, didn't I you? Yes, I did. I read it on behind the scenes. All right. Yes. I'll let you introduce it in just a little bit and tell us exactly what is happening. Right now, David Sapp is going to sing my Christian story. Keep calling as he sings for us right now. As by faith I run 
this race soon I shall see him as he is and look upon his face this is my story this is my song for I know Jesus and I share my story, my song. That can be your story tonight if you'll just open your heart to the Lord. We're going to have Brother Summerall lead us in a final word of prayer before Jan takes us to prison and shows us a miracle. First caller that we looked at tonight was from New York City. Someone needs salvation there. Oklahoma City, all kinds of problems in their lives. Aurora, Colorado, they have a very special physical need. Chandler, Arizona, that God will provide me with a wife. That's a good prayer. That's Sterling, Ohio. That's a good prayer. Yes, Steve needs to be a delivered from drugs. A couple of girls in the audience just raised their hands. Really? Yes. Turn well, the cameras around. you got to get a camera shot there. There, right there. God may answer prayer before this program is <laughs> over. That's right. Miami, Florida. Mesa, Arizona. Coolidge, Arizona. All over Florida and New York and Oklahoma and many, many places in between. And then thousands from Southern California. Mm. Brother Summerall, let's set people free in the name of Jesus. Lord, with compassion that you put within our spirits. That the human person is normally selfish with his Adamic nature. And when we become otherwise, it's divine. And we thank you that down within us is the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we reach out to four billion, five hundred million immortal souls and say, devil, you can't have them. They belong to God. They have the image of God upon them. They don't have your image upon them. They have the image of God upon them, and we claim them. And for these friends, we rebuke the devil that causes them to hurt. Lord, bring deliverance to these lives. Bring peace to troubled minds. Bring joy to downcast spirits. Let the love of God flow like a river into these lives. We command pain to go out of these bodies right now. We command those that are emotionally disturbed to be healed by God's power. Yes. We command those that are full of fear to be free. Fear, come out. And we ask, Lord, that a wave of healing will cross the land. You promised me, Lord, that in one night on television, 10,000 people would be set free. Let this be that night. Yes. Set 10,000 free. Amen. I command freedom. For your spirit, soul, and body, be free. Walk in holiness. Walk in light. Walk in God. And rejoice until we see him face to face. Amen. Amen. Let it be. Amen. Let it be. Amen. Let's tell Brother Summerall thanks for sharing the love of Jesus with us tonight. A lot of people have been set free. Glory. Praise God. Let it be. All right. Jan, honey, why don't you tell us oh. a little about what we're going to see right now? About a um, couple years ago now, I received a very special letter. And it was from a young man that was in the prison. And uh, he said, let me tell you a story. He said that he had had a problem with sickness and that when he, in the Florence, Arizona prison, when they had to have medical attention, they took them into Phoenix. And um, it was his day to go. And as he started to get into the van that would take them to Phoenix, to the medical facilities, uh, one of the guards said to him, says, uh, I hope you're not scared to get in the van, said, uh, Roman's in there. And he said, oh, you mean Stone? 
He said, yeah. He said, oh, no, I'm not afraid of him. And he said, oh, well, you don't know his reputation. He said, no, I know his reputation. And um, so they talked a little bit back and forth about him being one of the meanest, cold-hearted, bloodiest killers that had ever been taken into Florence, Arizona prison. Um, had killed several before he got in and several after. And um, so uh, John Wagner said, no, I'm not afraid of him. He said, I have Jesus Christ as my Savior. He said, I'll be glad to get in there with him. So he got in with him and there was Roman chained in the van down because he was having to go to the hospital too uh, because of some very serious injuries he had received. And um, so when John got in the van, he looked down at Roman. He said, hi, Roman, do you remember me? And he said, yes, I do. And they talked a little bit. And he said, uh, how are you? He said, well, praise the Lord, I'm okay. And John Wagner almost fainted. <laughs> he said, what did you say? He said, well, praise the Lord, I'm okay. Chained to this van. Mm. He said, what happened to you, Roman? And he said that one night in that darkened prison cell with no hope of ever getting out. And on his television set were two things. Skin flicks. Can you imagine them putting that into prisons, yeah. allowing that kind of yeah. garbage into prisons? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> he said there's skin flicks or there's a television show called Praise the Lord on Channel 21. And he said, one night I was watching that television station, Channel 21, and Laverne Tripp was giving his testimony. And he said, I gave my heart and my life to Jesus. Mm. And said, now I'm a born-again Christian and I'm just serving Jesus. Mm. And I got on a plane, miracle, miracle, miracle. Matthew and I went down, went through bars, gates, six lock gates, had to take every piece of metal off everywhere, everything off strip to get in to see Roman Stone. But after they had stripped us, gone through all the detection, all the tests, sound out, all the things, gone through six lock gates with all the guards, I said, oh, by the way, we want to take a television camera in. I mean, it was in, oh, okay, take it in. There was all these cases and wires and television cameras, and they didn't check that at all. It just went on through. So Matthew quickly got it set up, and this is the interview that we got with Roman Stone. And uh, Matthew, my son, and I got into Arizona State Prison, cell B, maximum, maximum security, and talked to a child of God. We're sitting now in the intensive custody unit of the Arizona State Prison in Florence, Arizona. And I'm talking to my brother in Jesus, Roman Stone. I received a letter, as many of you know, from John Wagner that told us about this gentleman. They were on the way to the hospital together. And um, John was asked, if he minded riding with this gentleman. And he said, no. And when he got in the van, Roman said to him, was it praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. And I think everyone almost fainted. Because Roman, I understand that you were known around here as one of the cold, bloodiest, meanest. Am I overstating this? <laughs> And you just told me that you hadn't cried in a long, long time. I've, I've cried about myself, or out of pity or out of anger, but never with love or caring before. What brought you to this place, Roman? The intensive custody unit here. Uh, prison, my acts of violence, of, you know, just not caring, my, my, my rage towards suicide, you know, through sin. Uh, Murder, robberies, thefts, assaults, just pure sin, violence. Roman, what, what made you not care? What is your background? What made you come to that place where you had no feeling for another human being? An 
unstable, unchristian environment. Just uh, never knowing where I would be the next day, insecurity, and just no Christian uh, love at home at all. No Christian, uh, no Christ in my life is what it boiled down to. Had you ever heard about Jesus as your Savior? I'd heard that about Jesus, a guy that had died on a cross, but I knew nothing about Jesus that was alive today. And that was the whole difference. And so your life just ended up with you're not caring about anyone, like getting to the place where it's just me and my and mine. And I seen I seen people talking about Jesus and about the, the Bible and everything, and then the next day I seen them doing the same things they're preaching against. So I figured, well, it's got to be me for now. And I knew that, you know, or I thought I knew that all this stuff was a hustle. It wasn't about anything, you know. And that's. Uh, that's what turned me from really even trying to get into it at the time. You know, Roman, you're right. There are a lot of people that are like that. And, you know, I've had a lot of people come to me and say, you know, I'd be a Christian, but I see so many hypocrites in the Christian church. And I say to them, and I'm going to say it to you, but, Roman, you don't have to be. See, Jesus wasn't, and you don't have to be. How? Did you change from the hardest, coldest killer in this prison to this beautiful person that I see sitting before me? I was sitting back here in the, what they call the dungeon. It's a special control unit. And I'm watching your program, and there's a brother on there talking about tomorrow may be too late. You know, if you don't give it, if he's talking to me right through that screen, talking about tomorrow will be too late. If you don't give yourself to Jesus right now, it's too late. And there's people all around me that would love more than anything to kill me because of the reputation they would get from killing me and because of other people's hates and vindictive feelings towards me. And I knew, man, I gotta do it. So I got down on my knees and I asked the Lord, I said, God, please, you know, I don't know what to say or how to do it, but please come into my life and change me from this thing and it's something that will glorify you, you know. And uh, it was like a weight came off me. And then the hard part came. The man told me, he says, now you've got to announce God. So I sat on my bed, and I knew other guys could hear me if I talked. I said, Jesus Christ is Lord. And it felt, I didn't feel right. You know, the devil was saying, man, shut up, don't say that. And then I said a little loud, Jesus Christ is Lord. <clears throat> kind of, kind of. <laughs> kind of masking who was saying it. And God told me, and the Spirit told me, hey man, if you'd be for real about this, forget it. So graveyard came by, and they're checking each cell. And a, one of the officers came to my door, and I told him, I said, do you know Jesus? He goes, yeah. I said, Jesus Christ is Lord. He goes, what? I didn't want to say it louder. I said, Jesus Christ is Lord. And it was just like, <clears throat> it was all gone. I felt so good. I felt just, ah. And uh, he says, you know what? Praise the Lord. And the man was a Christian. And all the, all the guards that were on that graveyard, God brought one that wouldn't humiliate me in my youth. And he was a Christian. And I just it was incredible. And the TV program that you were watching was Praise the Lord program. And the one that was preaching was Laverne Tripp. <laughs> Roman, what do you think of Christian television? I think, I think it's the best thing that I've... I can think of. They've got this uh, different types of programs on the TV with pornography on it, and they got these these uh, programs with with all the killing and violence on it, and the, the box office movies with your with your prescription TV. And uh, I can't get enough of uh, watching Christian television. There's just so much excitement on there. I just it's 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 life. It's not a movie. It's life. You know, I've I've often wondered why. Um People make movies about killing and, and rapes and horrible things. You know, so many people know how to do that, but we're trying so hard to make programming to show where there is real life and life-changing experiences. And you happen to be tuned in to that channel, Channel 21. <laughs> you know... There are people out there, there are young people, there may be young men, there may be people from this very prison 
and we're on in prisons from Juneau, Alaska, to New York City, to Miami, Oklahoma City, here in Florence, and all over California. And Roman, you can say something to them that I can't say or nobody else can say. I can say that all this, this act about being one of the fellas and, and, and walking that walk and talking that talk and, and showing how bad you are physically and how mentally strong you are about knocking people out and hurting people and playing gang-orientated games ain't about nothing. I thought I was one of the baddest things that walked the yard, and I ain't nothing, man. I'm nothing uh, until Jesus touched my life, and that's the Jesus that is alive today. A Jesus that loves me, even me. I mean, and I've taken people's lives in this prison here. I've knocked guards out for opening my door. I've laughed at preachers. I've insulted Christians. I've, you name it, I've done it in this, this prison and other prisons. And I was nothing until Jesus Christ came into my life, me, me, and touched my life. And I've got right around 500 years to do and I'm doing it all for Christ, and for the first time in my life, I'm really, truly, and honestly happy. And there ain't no happiness in all them drugs, and ain't no happiness in them gangs. The only happiness is in the living Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Roman, if we can catch them before they get here, what is prison like? What is it like to hear a judge say, Roman Stone? You will be in prison the rest of your life. What is that like? What is prison life like? Because it has to be. We know our society has to be protected from people that kill. What is it like? It's, uh, it's a suspended animation. You're, you're in, people see these movies about prison on TV and it's nothing like that. You know, I spend 24 hours a day in my cell, which is about six by eight and I come out of my cell three weeks for three days a week for a one hour exercise and a 15 minute shower and that's the only outside I see I don't see outside from my cell I have no window and that's it and that is my existence and before I had found Christ that was it there was nothing but anger and hatred and now through Christ I'm touching free world people constantly are writing me and, and telling me how much they love me through Jesus. And that right there is a freedom in itself. Prison is, is nothing but a slow and continuous death and sin. So don't come, sweaters. You got to give your life to Jesus. All the good deeds you could do today, tomorrow, or the next day are not going to do you a bit of good. The only good deeds that are going to do you any good at all is the good deeds of giving your life to Jesus. And all that... As I told a brother the other night, last night I stood up at 2 o'clock telling a guy about Jesus. I told him, you don't have to quit smoking, don't. You don't have to quit getting high. You don't have to do anything. As long as you sincerely give your life to Jesus Christ, he will save you. He will save you. And what I didn't tell him until later on was that he will take away that wanting to smoke the dope. He will take away that wanting to get high. And he will take away the urges for fornication and sin and hurt and pain. He'll take all that away as long as you give your life to Jesus Christ. The rest is taken care of. Every sin I could done, every sin I'm going to do, because I sin every day, is all forgiven. The same as every one of your sins is forgiven through Jesus Christ. And that happened over 2,000 years ago. Amen. You know, we hear so much, and I know the guards do, about jailhouse religion and people that get saved just thinking that maybe things will be easier on them. Roman, you have no hope of getting out of here. I'll get out of prison, but it'll be the day Jesus Christ says, hey, it's time for this man to move on to better things, to glorify God. I was telling a guy the other day, I was, I was going back to the dungeon, it was a couple months ago, and... What's the dungeon? The dungeon is a special control unit where I was saved, where they have all the worst people, the worst killers, the worst behaved people in the prison system. And... I was going back there, and someone called me a Bible jockey, a Bible thumper, and a Jesus freak. And I felt so happy, because I realized I used to say that to the same Christians to try to hurt them, when I realized I felt so much joy that I was making them happy by telling them that. 
you know, and that's what, what that's what it's about, you know. It's, mm. I tell you, I I don't know when I have been so touched. It won't take you to the streets. It won't, you know, this book right here will take you anywhere you want to go as long as it's in the will of God. And if it's not for the will of God, for you to walk, walk out of this prison, you're not going to. And it is the will of God for you to, to obey the laws of our, our country and our, our government. He put them people there in government, and we've got to obey them. As all of you are looking at Roman, just as I am, you're seeing a man that loves Jesus Christ with all of his heart and wants you to. But we are talking to a man that's been like a lot of you are out there, thinking that you can find happiness or peace or joy or something for yourself some other way. Roman tried it in being tough. Toughness didn't bring happiness, did it? No, it didn't do nothing but bring bitter, sour pain. It was just a chilling to my bones. What was going on inside of you? Did, did you have remorse when you killed a human being? No, I didn't. I had no remorse at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, I sit there and watched him die and told him to die. And it was... There's no remorse at all. You know, seeing you now, that is so incredible for me to believe it. It's just incredible. Where does that come from? Did you feel maybe that you were possessed, or were you just a product of no love? Anytime a person's eyes are not on Jesus Christ, they're on the devil, if the person admits it or not. And that giving that punk any power at all it's what he wants, and he loves it more than anything if you got your eyes off of Jesus. And that's what happened. I never had my eyes on him. So he had all the power in the world in me. But when I put my eyes on Jesus, he had no more power over me. No power at all. So, Satan really just used you to his fullest? Yes, he did. And uh, that'll never, never, ever happen again. And it doesn't have to happen to anybody out there, as long as they put their eyes on Jesus Christ. When things get bad and he starts putting you through tests and stuff, you ask for strength and you ask for patience and stuff, and God puts these little things in your life to give you strength and give you patience, and you take your eyes off of Jesus and start feeling sorry for yourself, you're doing nothing but giving strength to the devil. If you keep your eyes on Jesus, all them little problems are about nothing, and you ought to, when things hurt and when, when things are going bad and you, you want to you just get through it in, that's when you ought to be praising God the most because He's doing wonderful works in your life. It's when everything's going smooth and everything is going just the way you think it should is when you've got something to worry about because God's not working in your life at all. Roman, how many people have you killed? I've killed several. Have you lost? You really don't know? You just... I've killed uh, probably 11. Eleven, probably. With no remorse. Now, there's a. The only thing I can, only explanation I could use is these these tattoos on my body. I, I cover most of my body. That's the illustration I use. I can't take them off. I can't change them, and I can't cover them up. I can hide them, but I I don't want to. I want people to see the dirt I was in because this is a glorification of what Jesus Christ has taken me out of. And the same as the murders I've killed, the people I've killed, the murders I've done, the people I've killed spiritually and emotionally, they're all not coming back. But they're coming back through the glory of Jesus Christ because I'm giving him glory in it by saying that he took me out of that and he saved me from that. Do you know how many lives you can save now, Roman? <laughs> but how your testimony, just like Laverne Tripp's testimony, he said, hey, I was the biggest hypocrite in the church, but Jesus saved me, and through that you were saved. Do you know how many lives can be saved now through this testimony of you? If one is saved, 
I'd do it all again. Did you know I said if all of the pain that Paul and I have gone through building Trinity Broadcasting Network over the 10 years and only you were saved, all of the pain that we've gone through is worth it. Sitting here seeing you changed by the power of Jesus Christ. And you're, you're worth it. You're worth all the pain that Paul and I have gone through the last 10 years. And I praise Jesus for your changed life. And now, you know what I'd like for you to do? I'd like for you to just lead young people to turn from Satan, who you served and led you here to serve a 500-year sentence, to a Jesus Christ that in 500 years, I believe we're going to all be in the millennium together. But we got to reach him. we got to reach him, Roman. I want you to know that anybody that's listening that has any doubt about the power of Jesus Christ or has any doubt about my sincerity and my love for Jesus Christ can get a hold of Jan through the broadcasting network and she'll help you get in touch with me and give you my address and I'll write anybody that writes me. I'll answer and I'll pour out my heart to you the way Jesus loves me and I love you because Jesus Christ loves us all so very much and the only thing I can do is, is just praise God that I'm given this opportunity to possibly save one life from the pain and hell I've been in praise God and you know what as a close I would like for Roman Stone and me to join hands I told you to forgive me if I cry. I'm truly touched. I, I see Jesus in this man. And I know that there are young people out there whose lives are going to be changed because of this testimony. And I feel right now holding Roman's hand of 11 people that have died because of these hands. There are going to be thousands saved because of what is coming from his heart, not his mouth, his heart. And just pray with me right now, the simplest prayer in the world. Just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to free me from the power of the enemy. And Jesus, come into my heart right now. I don't want to end up in prison, but I want to end up in heaven, taking a lot of people with me. Pray that prayer, and don't end up here, young people, but end up in heaven. Don't serve the loser. Romans serve the devil and look where he ended up. Serve Jesus and we'll see you in heaven. Okay? I love you and Jesus loves you and that is the truth. Right? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God for Christian television and for the Amen. word and the witness that's, that's getting right. behind locked, Good closed doors, doors that's right. and winning men and women God. to the Lord Jesus Christ. Honey, Amen. you have a special little burden and we've only got a couple minutes to First of all, we share. hear from Roman very often and he's doing beautifully, growing in the Lord. If you do want to write him, you write to us here and we'll let him know. 
We want to get satellite dishes in every prison in America. I won't stop. I'm angry at Satan for how he would rob and take the life of a person like that. I have two sons. And I know what mothers would go through, and I know what Romans gone through. So we want to get satellite dishes in every prison, but first of all, we text Watson, one of the Manson young men, wrote us, and he's a chaplain at one of the main prisons, and they want v was it VTRs? A VCR. VCR. A cassette there. recorder. And we promised him that we'll send him whatever he needs to get the gospel of Jesus Christ into his prison. He said, I know it's asking a lot because it's 500 whole dollars. And you know, I think of people that have $500 to blow on anything, and they're just asking for a piece of equipment to get the gospel into the prisons. Help us reach them. We're doing it. And we're going to see a lot of beautiful people in heaven because you care because you can write a prisoner, visit a prison, and your life will be changed. It's wonderful. Amen. It's wonderful. Honey, I'm getting letters. Doors are opening in South Florida, Brother Summerall. New we York. had a chance to get satellite dishes in these prisons or hookups of one kind or another, New York prisons. Uh, Sing Sing Prison is under the pattern of Channel 54 there. Mm. And we're going to be able to get special equipment into there. So if the Lord quickens it to your heart, mm -hmm. we have several open doors right now where we can place pieces of equipment, this video cassette recorder with Charles Tex Watson, who has now received the Lord and is a chaplain in, uh, I believe, the Soledad Prison here in Southern California, or here in California. And so if you'll help us, we'll take Amen. the gospel just as far as we can you take it. You know something else they need? They need just mobile trailers for chapels. There are not building facilities on the prison lands, and they just need mobile homes for chapels, and they're asking for that. Let me just Anything say, if you have any ideas or opportunities or things that you want to share, write to Jan. She's kind of in charge of our prison ministries here at Trinity Broadcasting, and she'll work with you. And Together you can do great things and we, we can do you, great Roman. things. Love you, Lee McVeigh, all Amen. the guys in Arizona. I'm coming to see you again. I promise. Thanks, Thank Brother you. Summerall, for your anointed ministry and to all of you for being with us tonight. Good night. God love you. We love you. And remember, let everything that hath bread keep on Praise. praising the Lord, even in prison. We're so glad you've been with us for Praise the Lord. If you haven't asked Christ into your life, call a prayer partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Our 24-hour prayer partner line is 714-731-1000. If you'd like an audio cassette of Praise the Lord, please write and ask for program 630-83. That's 630-83. If possible, tuck in a love gift to help defray the cost of the tape ministry. TBN has a worldwide ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small, to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So right today, praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Paul and Jen would like to thank you for your prayers and financial support. You keep us on the air. Thank you. This is Jim McClellan saying, God bless you. And remember, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. The program was brought to you by the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout the United States of America.